Welcome to the third day of the Munich 2022 European Athletics Championships, where we've had a thrilling two days of action already. This is the third day, and we've got a host of finals. But this morning's session, we'll also be concentrating once again on the multi-events. We have the start of the women's heptathlon, including the first two disciplines, the 110 meters hurdles which will get underway just in a little while in about an hour's time that will be the very first event on the track and later on this morning the shot port and then we've got a host of qualifying competitions as well notably in the men's hammer which is just about to get underway you can see the temperature 21 degrees it's going to be another hot and bright morning here in the bavarian capital hardly any breeze there's all the flags of the european athletics member federations from far and wide spectators already starting to come into the wonderful olympic stadium which can trace its history back to the 1972 olympic games we've had great attendances here over the course of the first two days and we had last night Nicholas Cowell being roared to the rafters of this stadium. And of course, the motto of these championships, not just the European Athletics Championships, but the multi sport European Championships, is back to the ruse. Here's the schedule for this morning. And you can see that we do get underway at 19.35, just over five minutes' time, Central European time. And we're one hour ahead, as I always like to say Great Britain, Ireland, Portugal, and in the Canary Islands of Spain. Alongside me, my code commentator, Hannah England. Good morning, Hannah. Good morning, Phil. It is a lovely sunny morning again here in Munich. The weather forecast, it had forecast we might have a few thunderstorms, a bit of rain. We thought that might affect the downtown races, maybe on the cobbles and the technical sections. But so far, it's just been pushed back day by day and we've been treated to brilliant weather, which I think has really enhanced the performances for our athletes. Well, here are some of the arrivals getting off the buses a little bit earlier this morning, coming here for the opening event. But let's just turn the clock back, probably about 12 hours or so. And we had eight finals being decided last night, as well as the two race walks in the morning. Just pick one that absolutely was your highlight. I think, I mean, I almost want to choose the atmosphere. It was such a brilliant atmosphere. The crowd were just roaring and you highlighted Nicholas Cowell that really started the evening off. It was his, his javelin throw, even more than his 1500, was just phenomenal. And everyone started believing that perhaps the world champion from 2019 that failed to retain that crown in Eugene in Oregon was going to have a special night here in Munich instead. And Nicholas Cowell certainly did and he put, paved the way for Gina Lunkenkampfer to close the programme out by winning with an equal time to Majinga Kumpunji, 100th ahead of Daryl Nita in the women's 100 metres. And that was just a fantastic end of the evening. Well, you cheated, you picked two, but I'll take that <laughs> Sorry. as... Sorry, Phil. I'll take that as the German victories, then. <laughs> <laughs> the right. German victories and the German crowd. <laughs> well, I, I really really enjoyed the return to form of Lamont Marcel Jacobs. There's been so many question marks over his fitness since he won the world indoor 60 metres title in Belgrade. He had to withdraw from the Olympics. He's passed on several meetings this year and now he came back to take the European crown. His first European crown outdoors in equaling a championship record. Well, it was pretty kind to our Olympic champions last night. Militardis Tentoglu managing to take the gold medal with a championship winning performance in the long jump as well. And uh, Sandra Perkovic didn't win the Olympics last time round, but she has won it twice before, made it a record equaling six gold medals for Croatia in the women's discus. Well, we're just looking at some of the women. We've seen quite a lot of the women, including Anouk Vet uh, and Ivona Dadic warming up. Some of the other women out there alongside us in the warm-up arena, and they're going to be coming into this stadium in about an hour's time for that first event. Weissenberg, Sophie Weissenberg in Germany. Oh, that's an awful three fouls in the long jump out in Eugene and the emotion pouring out. Nafi TM. It was almost similar to Simon Ihammer for me. Nafi TM, we kind of go, she's going to win, she's going to win. It's absolutely fine. And Luke Vetter, a massive javelin throw. Conversely, Nafi TM could lift her game in the 800 and hold on to the gold medal in Oregon. They expect those athletes to battle it out again. And before that, we're going to have two hammer throw pools. This is Group A making their way out from the call room. This call room is underneath the stadium. 
We've got an outdoor warm-up track where we've just seen the athletes milling around and warming up. They'll then get called to a tent, walked into this room that might be a little bit cooler, have all their equipment and outfits checked, numbers certified, and then they'll make their way out into the competition arena. Well, it's that's a heat haze over Munich. We're keeping our fingers crossed. We've been very lucky so far with the weather. We were predicted to have showers at various times during the course of the previous couple of days. The rain has stayed away. There was just a smattering of very, very light rain early yesterday morning. I think this morning we've got clear skies predicted, which is all good news. That's the famous Olympic Tower. I've been up the Olympic Tower. It's quite a spectacular view. You can see all the way to the outskirts of the city from up there. And of course, you can see right the way across the Olympic Park, where not just athletics, although as we all know, athletics is the focal point of these championships, but all nine sports are being contested, including gymnastics, table tennis, sport climbing, cycling. I've missed out a couple. What ones have I missed out? Did you say triathlon? I didn't say triathlon. Uh, only bias my uh, friend on Stanford won the women's triathlon race. That was back on Friday. I was still in the UK watching that. And the atmosphere here in the Olympic Park has been really brilliant. There's so many pros and cons to being part of a multi-sport championship. Logistically, it's hard. It's a massive operation here. Big queues last night for the public transport getting home. But everything is running really smoothly. And you do wonder, having this whole atmosphere here in the Olympic Park is enhancing every sports experience this week. Well, you're looking after the hammer. We've got the first qualifying group coming up. And a little bit later on this morning, the second qualifying group. They do tend to allow the hammer their own moment in the spotlight because obviously there's a few safety implications with this event. But I think uh, it's a spectacular event and it's great to see these guys in action. It's over to you, Hannah. <laughs> it is. And we've been treated to almost a decade of Polish dominance in the hands of Pavel Fajdek and Wojciech Nowitzki. We're going to see these men in qualification today. And, and traditionally, the heavy throws is really strong on a European level. And I kind of feel like the men's hammer throw is one of the last strongholds of dominance, men's discus throw as well. We took the full podium in Eugene in the men's discus. I think we did in the hammer as well. But when you look towards the, the javelin, uh, the women's hammer, women's discus throw, apart from Sandra Perkovic and the two shot puts, it's becoming a much more global uh, landscape. These uh, European men trying to do their very best to hold on to the titles, both globally and locally. Quentin Bigo here of France, fourth at the World Championships. He'll be very keen to improve that here. But first, they've got to navigate qualification. Automatic qualification into the final is 77 metres and 50 centimetres. We've got as many as eight men have done that this season across the two pools. I've got to say, I think the second group, Group B, gets underway in about 80 minutes is a little bit stronger. And when you're a middle distance runner like I was, competing over 1,500, you kind of look at the heats and go, oh, I've got a bit of a stinker there, or oh, I've got a bit of a bye, it's a bit easier. It's almost the opposite. I think in these qualification pools, the men in this group A are going to be painfully aware they can't rest on their laurels at all. Uh, they've perhaps got the advantage it's going to be a tiny bit cooler uh, this morning when they're doing their throws, opposed to 80 minutes later when Group B will go. But they will try and keep throwing to get as much distance as they can if they don't hit that automatic qualifying mark of 77 metres, 50 centimetres. Well, we were seeing last night uh, some terrific throwing in the women's discus, and uh, perhaps that should have been another of our highlights with Sandra Perkovic taking a sixth consecutive gold medal, the first time anyone has done that in an individual event. Um, but it also, this stadium does seem to accumulate a little bit of dust. I mean, we were joking last night about Sandra Perkovic taking her towel in every time, giving the circle a bit of a sweep. Well, keep an eye out on that, because that can actually affect things just very slightly. At the moment, the dust levels are quite a way down. Of course, no pollen at this time of year, but later on in the morning, maybe the dust is just rising up a little bit. They're just going to have to sweep it away a little bit more just to get that purchase in that circle. I, mean, I do think you're right. I feel it was confusing. Almost every woman walking into that circle and, and cleaning it, yet there was still dust coming up <laughs> for every thrower. They will pick up a bit of debris as they walk from their warm-up area into the circle over that grass and whatnot, but seem a little bit more than that. Certainly favourable to wet thunderstorm conditions that we could have had. Oh, we 
they talk about strong men of Europe, Iceland, dominant. And the world's strongest man, one of my favourite pastimes. I get teased <laughs> terribly by my friends and family, but I absolutely love watching World's Strongest Man competitions. You, like might, you might get a bit of teasing from myself <laughs> and Alex now you've told us that. <laughs> but, uh, Too much information, perhaps. <laughs> it, would have, it would motivate me to go and do my gym sessions in the depth of winter. I'll look at those men and go, all right, better get myself down the gym if I want to have any power for the 1500. Johansson of Eisen is going to open proceedings in Group B. You can see him off to the right-hand side of the throwing circle there. He has managed to get the hammer down the middle, but it is going to be given a red flag. Imar Johansson, third at this year's NCA Championships. Got a number of European athletes that use that American collegiate uh, system to develop themselves and to further their education. And get a, a chance to study for free. That's Every nation has its own tuition fee kind of situation and this, that and the other, but being able to use your sporting prowess to also get yourself a degree is something a lot of our athletes take advantage of. Adam Kanga to Finland next in the circle. Went out to Oregon, didn't make the final there. With his personal best. 79 metres, that would be enough to hit the automatic qualifying mark. Again, just drifting over towards that right-hand side. These athletes will throw over and over again, trying to get your 10,000 hours of repetition and practice in to master something. I say a lot of our field eventers will just... They will do other training, they will complement this with weight training, fitness and everything else like that. But they will spend an awful lot of time simply just throwing. Good opening throw from Kanga, 71 metres, 8 centimetres. Yes, we were talking yesterday about what it's needed to get into the finals for the horizontal jumps and the throws and we really were guesstimating a little bit that uh, what we needed to do with the throws yesterday. Now the qualifying conditions here have been set at 77.50 or the top 12 to the final and usually as a rule of thumb the technical officials have it as you know getting through five six seven men as an automatic qualifier depending on the annual list depending on what it's re required in the past. I don't think it's going to require 77.50 this time. What's, what's your feelings? Well, I don't know. We have got eight men over that qualification mark. So, yes, you'd say 12. You won't get 12 over 77.50, not this time in the morning, despite the good conditions. But we've only got two men in this Group A that have got, gone over that automatic qualifying mark. So I do think they're going to have to do all three throws, many of these men. Ragnar Carlsen of Sweden, three-time national champion his coaching team like that could that be close to the automatic qualifying mark he has done 77 exactly this season new personal best 74 65 really good showing from Carlson there in the opening round yes yeah, just 21 years of age Carlson I've watched him through some of the junior competitions he did very very well fourth in the European juniors European under-20s as it was back in 2017 when we were in Italy in Grosseto and he's subsequently really improved to become quite a formidable senior competitor despite the fact that next year he's still going to be eligible for European under-23 competition. Quinton Bigo picked up a silver medal in Doha and then through a personal best this year first time over 80 metres third in the world list to settle for fourth out in Eugene. The Frenchman would have been bitterly disappointed with that. Against yeah. Hallant's almost kind of... Oh, no, he was down in fifth. I'm so <laughs> going to award him the bronze medal from Eugene. But Bigo, 77 metres, 22. Nice and close to that automatic qualifying mark. It wasn't always Ivan Henriksen picked up the bronze in Oregon. He's a great championship performer. We won't see him until Group B. Here is Nowitzki. A 
Olympic champion last year, packing up his bronze medal he took at the World Championships in Doha. But he just couldn't get the better of Pavel Fidek in the final in Eugene. Let's hope both of these men are awake nice and early and they're here. Almost, uh, kind of emotionally and physically. So what a treat to see yet another competition between the great Fidek and Nowitzki. Check Nowitzki, 81 metres, 58, his best this season. A bit of glare on my screen, but that looks very close. It is it's often nice to see where the officials run to. It is past the automatic qualifying mark. That's brilliant throwing from Wolczyk Nowitzki of Poland. The cliched one and done for the big pole. And he can turn his attention to trying to figure out how he can beat Pavel Fidek in a couple of days' time. I think he's probably going to turn his attention to maybe just having another coffee and a bit more <laughs> breakfast, actually. <laughs> I would if I was him and then worry about Fidek. <laughs> Nothing like worrying about your opponents on an empty stomach. You uh, really no. don't want to do it. 78 metres, 78. That's a brilliant distance. Ah, yes, sir. We'll put him in the top seven or eight throws of the season. I mean, he's there already on the top of the piles. 81.58 is the world lead. Nowitzki is going to probably be back in his hotel before most of the fans have turned up this morning here in Munich. Thomas Mardell of Norway is up next. This year's NCA champion. Oh, studying at the University of Florida. He's a bit despondent as he let go of the hammer there. It's going to be below... 70 metre mark. <laughs> Foul in the first round for Mardell. It's uh, intentional whether he lost balance, the camera angle quite rightly shifting to follow the hammer through the air. Let's see uh, the Norwegian coaching team. Brilliant night last night for them with. Jakob Ingebrigtsen taking his first gold medal. He's going to try and pick up another one in the 1500 tomorrow night. But the brilliant start in that 5,000 metres. Mikhail Andesakis of Greece. The season's best, just a tiny bit underneath the automatic qualifying mark. Get out towards his personal best. He could hit it. Big, that looked powerful, just a touch over 70 metres. That's going to give him a good standing within this group, but quite a bit short of the automatic qualifying mark. I'll tell you what, as we watch the Greek thrower, I've just dug up the statistics. Have a guess how many times, how many competitions Pavel Fajdek and Nowitzki, Wojciech Nowitzki, have actually competed together. Right, so it was... I know this, Phil, because I love my men's hammer throw. Yeah. <laughs> Going into the World Championships, Fidek had beaten Nowitzki 88 times, Nowitzki 25. Sorry. So they've done a few more since then. What are we going to say? One, 120? Not too bad. This will be the 115th. Oh, there we go. Yeah, where did you get that? Oh, there you okay. go. So another two since the World Championships. Yeah. I don't think that includes the I don't have got Fashdek down as winning 87 times. Oh, so you know, I, think you're missing, I think you're missing a few. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I really enjoyed these two men fighting it out through this whole season. Yeah, they, they first faced each other in the Polish National Championships back in 2009. There you go. I've dug that up. I didn't actually have those statistics <laughs> automatically to hand. I, there's, a, there's a wonderful, wonderful statistics site that's run out of Finland that's got all this stuff, and I dug it around in it. Well, given the his history of so 70 meters 49 for Andersakis. Okay, fifth place in this group. The Greek will know that's not enough. He's got to keep throwing. I mean, Finland surely know more about throws than a 1500 meter runner from Britain. They haven't had, actually had too many good hammer throws. They've had one or two. Uh, they had Ole Pekka who was world junior champion a few years ago, and then went on to place very well at senior championships. Volchek Nowitzki. 
nice replay here. See, the angle of, angle of release is so important. I mean, reading something that said, uh, well, it said it was exactly 42.6 degrees <laughs> for Pavel Fidek. I haven't even written that down. I know that off the top of my head. It's probably wrong. Uh, but yeah, everyone's different. They're a different height. So, you know, something around that 40, 50 degrees release angle is what these athletes are looking at. Ideal trajectory. Hammer throws are going to like these warm conditions in the low 20s, bit of humidity, they'll be nice and loose. So we've already seen not just Novitski, but also a good throw, even though it wasn't over the automatic qualifier by Quentin Bigo. I think we could see quite a few quite long throws, maybe not too many over the automatic qualifier, but I wouldn't be surprised to see quite a plethora of throws over 75 metres. I think you're right, Phil. I dodged the question of committing to what it would take to make the final. Let's say... 75, 80. Yeah, why not? That's, that's, <laughs> why not? <laughs> that sounds like a nice distance. Yeah, I'd, I'd go for something around that. That's, that's a fair bet, I reckon. 2012 Olympic champion, Paz. They're just bailing out the big Hungarian athlete there, Christian Paz. And it will be a foul. He just didn't quite have his balance. He's in 74 metres this season. Nowhere near his... Lifetime best of 82.69, but still competitive. Oskan Tachi of Turkey, Mediterranean Games champion this year. Personal best is exactly the automatic qualifying mark at 77.50. Good season's best of 75.22. If he can get anywhere near that, that'd be a great start. It's just below the 70 meter mark for his first throw. So Volchit Nowitzki is 78.78. The only athlete over the automatic qualifying mark. Quinton Bigot of France, 77.22. The next best, Oscar Voltacci, has been measured at 67 metres and 84. Putting him in sixth place in Group A of the men's hammer qualification. Thirteen athletes in back in group, both groups. Piltachi was number nine, so another four athletes to go in this opening round. They'll get three throws. Second Frenchman Jan Chassenad, no mark at the national championships, didn't qualify in Eugene. As the Frenchman managed to hit his groove, he's done a personal best of 77.34 this year, so he's having a good year. But he's just clipped the netting. You can see his hammer stuck in the netting. Just an adder have to make some minor adjustments. So do keep the sides of the cage positioned at an angle to ensure that the hammer doesn't go. If it's if it's going wayward, if it looks like it's going to go out of the sector, it should in theory get stuck in that netting first. Adjust the netting for left hand and right hand throwers. I think everybody has been a right hand thrower so far. It's often a delay when the officials sort of rush out and change the cage. So a foul in the first round for Jan Chassenard. Probably worth mentioning that a lot of these throwers would have been competing all the way back since March when we had the European Throwing Cup in La Ria and that Portuguese city, which has hosted a great number of U European athletics events, is actually also hosting next March the 2023 European Throwing Cup. They've signed up for three years, so thank you very much to Portugal and Luria for really committing to hosting European athletics events. I did a European team champs there. It was lovely. Oh, yeah. oh, gosh, I first, was there, there as well. First sub two 800 metres for me there. Uh, lovely, lovely city, lovely town. 
great facility, so that's brilliant. They've stepped up to host that winter throws competition. It's so brilliant. Obvious, very obvious reasons. These athletes can't compete indoors. So to give them, take them to a nice warm country. And I mentioned it a little bit last night, but European athletics and the range of competitions that they put on for our athletes it is brilliant from the age group stuff to things like that. Having a winter throws in March is perfect for athletes to check in on their progress. Javier Cienfuego is the national record holder for Spain. <laughs> Bang on the 70 meter mark. Cienfuego is gonna need a little bit more. Three throws is just not enough to get into your to your groove. He walks out the front as well. As bold. Surely you want a mark next to your name. We're talking to Chase Ely, the world champion in the shot put about this, and she said there is a psychological element that you, you don't necessarily want a bad mark next to your name, but that wasn't awful. I was interested to see Chase in the crowd during the uh women's shot put and quite a lot of Americans have actually decided to stay in Europe and are attending this competition they're at various European bases and before they go on to the Diamond League meetings we of course have the Lausanne Diamond League meeting just coming up a few days after this and so they haven't gone back home they don't want to suffer any jet lag and so we've managed to boost the attendance with some quite well-known names we also had was it Noah Lyles we had in the audience last night Daniel Raba of Hungary up next Second at their national championship, still just 24. And these technical power events, you tend to get better with age, but that could be a touch over 70 meters. There's a wonderful clip online, Phil, of um, Noah Lyles and the mascot Friday having a little dance off, which That's is particularly right, yeah. fun. Good sport. And so many of our athletes, they are fans of the sport, but when you're focused on competing, um, it can be really quite dry. You know, you have to almost ignore the competitions going on around you. So that is over 70 metres for Daniel Rabat. Puts him in sixth place in the group, 70 metres, 82. 32, apologies. That three looking like an eight in this blazing sunshine here in Munich. Yes, this provides a quite convenient mid-season break for many of the top Americans. They can uh, refresh themselves, get... They've obviously come over for the two preceding Diamond League meetings in Silesia and also in Monaco. And now they can just uh, just re really sort of tweak a few things as ahead of the finales at the end of the season. Of course, we do go on to Brussels and Zurich for the Diamond League finals there. So Mikhailo Havrilok of Ukraine will be the final competitor in the opening round. Start slow and low. Uh, extending those legs as he gets towards the point of release. Undefeated in the 2022 season, the Ukrainian didn't go to the World Championship, so you have to feel that, have a look, perhaps keeping a low profile, maybe for obvious reasons. It's so tricky for our Ukrainian athletes to get their competitions and their training in. And that's a good opening effort over 70 metres for Mikhailo Havrilok to complete round one of Group A in the men's discus. 70 metres, 50 centimetres. It's enough for fifth place in the group at the moment. staff in that lady to her side she definitely did one of the heavy throws shot put or discus day's getting away with me already day three of seven and <laughs> it's already feeling like we've been treated to way more action than we deserved keep moving forward keep moving forward <laughs> she, she was the coach of um fanny roos and the other swedish uh axelina johansson oh excellent uh, in the women's shot put unrivaled in knowledge from Phil Minchel. I try and, try and absorb information, but I'm left wanting when I'm sat next to you. So Hilmar Johansson of Iceland, opening round two in the men's hammer. Just getting it inside the sector. Aurora's support is largely due to the fact that he got a foul in the first round. That will settle the nerves somewhat. Hilmar Johansson. <laughs> I 
<laughs> they're just willing that ass like a tennis match when they watch the ball go side to side. The whole team leaning, willing the hammer on. 72 metres, 87. For Johansson, puts himself up into fourth place. Gavin Kangas of Finland up next. Seventy-one meters, eight centimeters in the first round. Builds the speed with the hammer, then starts moving across the circle and just falls out of that. You want to transfer all that energy out into the implement, and you can see Kangas just falling over to his left-hand side. I'm guessing that was an intentional foul off camera. That won't challenge his opening round effort. Sort of danced across the circle there, wasn't very effective. I love having this opportunity to focus on some of the field events because they're so technical. Brother lives out in Canada. He's been desperately trying to get his son into athletics. And he loves the hammer throw because it just makes him think of Matilda, and Mrs. Trunchbull. There he is. Oh, I've heard about, I've read about that in one of my favourite books. Wow, they're really doing it. <laughs> Carlson not quite managing it there, just launching his hammer into the netting. He'll stay in third place for the time being. It's his second round effort. It's going to be a foul. Switching from heel to toe, heel to toe really fast. Aaron Ragnar Carlson up in third place behind Quinton Bigo. Volchit well, Nowitzki has already packed his bags and left the arena. Well, just looking back to what was required to make the final four years ago, in fact, 73 19 was the 12th qualifier back in Berlin in 2018, so maybe Carlson's distance will be good enough if he doesn't improve. Quinton Bigo of France next up, 77 metres, 22 in the first round, so he's looking pretty good. And you can't argue with the application of this automatic qualify mark. There have been eight men, eight entrants over the automatic qualify mark, 77 and 50 is probably a good choice from the organisers. Perhaps Quinton Bigo would have rathered it was a little bit less. He might not have to still be out there in this blazing sunshine. Our athletes are so used to competing in hot conditions. So that's right about bang on the 77, 75 metre line for Quinton Bigo. He's not going to improve his first round effort. 77 metres, 11 centimetres. Very I think, consistent. I think he can feel very confident of going through to the final, despite him just falling very slightly short of the automatic qualifier. And Bigo's got a bit of unfinished business here at the Europeans because he crashed out in qualifying four years ago in Berlin, but then went on the following summer to get a medal in Doha. But he was coming here, so here, here to Germany, uh, coming to Berlin, really hoping to get in the top three on that occasion. Thomas Mardell foul in the first round. He's managed to get his way around that netting here in a second. Maybe short of 70 metres. 74-81, his best this season. Mardell's got one attempt left to try and align all his learnings from the 2022 season and his career. Get himself into the European final. a.m. local time here in Germany. These athletes would have had to get pretty up pretty early, get some breakfast at the hotel, get onto the organised transport, over to the warm-up track, do their warm-up, into the cool room and all the way here. It's not fun. It's something you relish as a competitor. It's something you just have to get done. And the Sakis of Greece, 70 metres, 49 in the first round. And could be a bit of an improvement. It's gone further over the 70 metre line, I think. See a throwing circle. I used to think they 
go round this circle, they'd use the whole circle, but instead it's very much a straight line across it. See that in the shot put. And here in the hammer as well, they just start moving. It's almost like there's a, a stream down the middle of the circle. They've just got to stay in that. Each angle will be slightly different. We all know about your middle distance credentials. Did you ever try the hammer when you were involved in the club athletics? <laughs> no, I did do shot put. The, uh, we have a lot of league competitions in Britain. Um, and shot put and javelin. I could do that after an 800 to collect extra points for my team, and it was it was pitiful, particularly the javelin. I think I was best off holding onto the tip and <laughs> leaning it out. Pars, the 2012 Olympic champion, asking for no clapping. There's still some clapping going on. And some athletes do find that distracting. If it's not the right rhythm, it's not going to help. Foul in the first round for the Hungarian, and I just. You can see there's no power, there's no zip at the end of that throw. And he walks out the front. Big issues here for Christian Paz of Hungary. Definitely capable of making this final. Just a little bit out of sorts. Yes, in addition to that Olympic title, just a week, few weeks before winning in London, he also took that year's European title as well. And he's got other European medals, so he knows what it takes to firstly get into the final and then get on the podium. But he is, I think, to be fair, reaching the twilight years of his career. So Quinton Bigot might have been listening to you, Phil Munchell, because he looks like he's switched into his normal trainers, the Frenchman, and he's going to gamble that his 77 metres 22 is enough to make the final. And that's, a, that's a smart gamble. It's not, it's not awful. Altachi of Turkey has got to keep throwing those. 67, 84 isn't going to be enough. It looks like it could be over the 70 metre mark. Again, apologies. We've got quite a lot of glare on our TV screens here in the arena. And we're quite a long way above the field of play. It's quite hard. I almost have to wait for the officials to run along with their measuring stick before committing to which, which side of which line the influence landed. I joked yesterday, I felt as though we were halfway to Stuttgart, but it did feel like that climbing the stairs this morning. <laughs> I definitely need another coffee. Valtacci does improve his best mark, 70 metres, 39. Eighth place in the group at the moment. So one Frenchman has chosen to walk away, thinks he's done enough. Jan Chauchenard, foul in the first round. Oh, foul in the second round as well. See that frustration coming out. He did no mark at the French Championships. And when you've had that in a season, that's got to play on your mind. <laughs> I mean, Jan Chassenard, I think, is quite a lot taller than the officials that he's just walked past. They're going to they're gonna have to... They have managed it. I think I can see to the naked eye they've managed to unravel his hammer. Chassenard, majorly frustrated. Jan Chassenard... Super frustrated. Go over, talk to his coaching team, see what they recommend. Apologies, I don't speak French. Uh, I would not be surprised if there's a few swear words hanging around in that. So, Chassenard certainly capable of making this final. 77 metres, 34 centimetres this season. He's failing to reproduce that at championship level. Javier Cienfuego of Spain is up next. Another athlete with a foul in the first round. We're just moving towards the end of the second round in this Group A qualification. More of a satisfied clap. That has gone quite far past the 70 metre mark, so great second round effort from the Spaniard. Didn't make the final in Oregon. Sian Fago could be on his way to the final here. That was a good effort. Phil, I, I didn't cover the women's hammer throw qualification. I was off doing some of the road events. <laughs> but you, yourself and Alex Settle, you did mention that there were some issues that it, the women didn't look quite comfortable doing the hammer throw. 
threw up a lot of fouls there as well. So I, I do wonder if there's something going on down there. I mean, they haven't got the sunlight in their face or anything like that. Or perhaps they have now. And they come to the back of the circle and they set their position. They've got squinting into that sunlight. It's, every arena is a tiny bit different. Well, one of the things that I've noticed, actually, and I, I haven't actually, I have to be honest, say I've talked to somebody about it, but the actual, this famous roof actually just falls just a little bit short of the hammer cage. And there's a lot of back shade on it. And I'm just wondering whether they can actually sight their angles quite as well as they would like. I think there might well be, at this time in the day, quite strong sunlight, which is going to cause them quite a lot of problems. So, Daniel Rabat of Hungary. Look for an improvement on his 70-32, and he did get it. 71-39, 10th place. Consistent series for the Hungarian athlete. But there's a lot of athletes in there. They are throwing below their best. Volchit Nowitzki has hit the automatic qualifying mark. He's 78, but that's kind of I know, business as usual for him. He's an over 80 metre thrower. Michaelo, have a look. Perhaps there could be coaching staff there on the home on the phone to a home coach. Not every athlete gets to travel with their personal coach. They sometimes have to use the team coaching staff. Have a look again with that low start, high finish. Looking to get past 70 metres again. That is going to improve on his 70 metres, 50 centimetres. Actually, we made a very, very good point, which I've just uh, done a little bit of looking at the results from four years ago. In the qualifying rounds four years ago, once again, there were very modest marks, not dissimilar to what we we're seeing here, as well as I think the sunlight issues. I think it's just really a case of trying to motivate yourself first thing in the morning. I think that has a lot to do with it. So everything's relative, everything's just ratcheted back. And even though we've got this quite difficult 7750 automatic qualifying mark, we're probably only going to see one or two people, I would imagine, maybe three or four get it rather than the five, six, seven, eight. I think it's just really a question of it all happening early morning. But it is the same for everybody in Group A. In Group B, well, the sunlight is going to be brighter and it's going to be warmer. They may have slightly better conditions and, of course, they'll be a bit more awake. <laughs> they will be in, as they mentioned, Quinton Bigot and Volchuk Nowitzki, who have both exited the stadium. They're the only athletes over that automatic qualifying mark so far this season in this pool versus six in the second one. I do think we could see some further throws in Group B. We're heading now into the third round, third and final round in the Hammer qualification, Group A. Hilmar Johansson of Iceland. Big roar for his second round effort after his foul in the first. And he's given that a bit more welly faster across the circle for my money. Let's see where those officials run to. I think that could be close to 75 metres for Johansson. He's got a season's best of 75.52. And his fan club really enjoyed that. You could see him almost relax and build a lot more speed and power there in his final round effort. It's just short of the 75 metre line. No, it's over the 75 metre line. Oh, geez. It's a great throw. Finn Hilmar Johansson. I think 76, 33, season's best. Brilliant throw up into third place in this group. Aaron Kangas up next. I do think you're right, Phil. I think there's a lot of elements, but for me also, if you're, you're tense and you're nervous, you're trying to balance opportunity versus risk, and you're heading into a qualification round, and you're carrying that bit of tension. It's, it's, it's not as fun. You're not loose, you're not free. You don't throw as far. Kanga, 71 metres in the first round. Foul in the second, that's not going to be any improvement for the finish man. Angus did let that mark be measured with 67 metres. He stayed down in eighth place in this group. Surely not enough to make the final. 
Ragnar Carlson up next. Great second round effort. Can he continue that momentum into his third and final throw? That first round effort that was good, 74-65, then a foul. It's a valid throw for Carlson. He's going to just have to sit and wait. I think that would be some, uh, sometimes athletes use chalk, sometimes they use something that's a bit, little bit more like tar. It's a bit more user-friendly than tar. Good shot there, Carlson just applying that to his throwing glove. 73 metres and 72, no improvement. Fourth place in the group, though, that's that's pretty good. When you're trying to collect 12 athletes across two qualification pools. So Ragnar Carlsen, that's OK. Thomas Mardal keen to get into the throwing circle. not familiar with the NCA Championships, National Collegiate American somethings. It's very competitive. It's a lot of money and emphasis, training facilities, coaching expertise piled into the NCA system. And Thomas Mardell won that. He's at the University of Florida this year. Just 68 meters 55, I think that clipped the edge of the cage there and that's an indication that the throw wasn't quite going to plan maybe a tiny bit closer to the 70 meter mark i don't think it will improve his 11th place reaction there from the Norwegian Thomas Mardell 68 meters 58 remains his best throw and he'll stay in 11th place Nicole Andersakis is in ninth place at the moment the Greek athlete is capable of so much more He's gone over 77 meters this season and he hits the netting on his third and final attempt Andersakis will be left wondering where that seven meters he had earlier in the season went to because he's not been able to reproduce it here in Munich. Well, he was a final four years ago in Berlin when he finished ninth through over 75 meters in qualifying on that occasion. It's just not happening for him today. The analysis there for the Greek athlete and his coaching team. Of course, the hammer throw not in the Diamond League anymore. They have had a, some brilliant competitions put on nonetheless on the circuit. These men they really do live for the championship um, opportunities and Andersakis might not have too many more opportunities to compete and try and improve his season. Christian Pars again just saying to the crowd, I don't want that clapping, it's distracting me. He's sitting on two fouls. Christian Pars, he has every right to ask this crowd not to clap. There's nothing else going on in the arena. It's just the automatic response from the German crowd. That's what their athletes like. Pars clipping the netting, as we saw with the previous effort, effort, clipping the netting, it's probably not going too much to plan. It will, oh, he's fouled it, Pars has walked out the front. 2012 Olympic champion, not wanting any of those marks next to his name. And I do think Christian Pars, he's got every right to be frustrated if people are clapping and he's asking them not to. But at the same time, it almost felt that he was starting each throw with a lot of tension and frustration before he'd even completed it, perhaps carrying an injury or illness into this championships. It's Christian Pars underperforming there and it will be no mark for the Hungarian. Oskan Vitacci is in 10th place in this group. He has 
improved with every throw. Ah, and that hits the netting. It's stuck in the netting. And he knew it before it even hit it. Well, Tachi, frustration as he released that implement. Best throw of just over 70 metres. Almost certainly is not going to be good enough to see him through to the final. It's looking once again as though you're going to need probably, well, to be safe, 75 metres. You might get through with 74 or just over 73 metres. We'll wait and see. That leaves us with four athletes in this group left to throw. Volchek Nowitzki, the only athlete with an automatic qualifying mark. Quinton Bigot of France deciding this is probably going to be good enough. Just a no on two fouls. Very capable of making this final if he can put a throw together. And it is a third foul for Jan Chassenard. Such frustration. He would have loved to have joined his teammate, who we presume, Quinton Bigot. We think he's done enough to get into the final. Jean-Baptiste Boussel of France going in the second pool as well. But Jan Chassenard, very physically capable of making this final just finding the netting his third attempt to make it a hat trick of fouls leaves us with Javier Cienfogo, Daniel Raba and Michaela Haberluk as our final three throwers See him for go at the moment, the best of the throwers left in the competition. He's in fifth place. Ragnar Carlsen, one spot ahead of him with 74.65. See him for go looking for an improvement on 73 and 26. Didn't make the final in Eugene. He'd love to have two opportunities to compete here in the Olympic Stadium. Slow spinning start for the Spaniard, and he builds his speed across the circle. That could be a little bit better for CM Figo. Can he improve his 73 metres and 26? It's about trying to improve your standing within this group, but also every centimetre could count against someone else in Group B. Good perseverance, perseverance from Cienfuego that could have let his head go down. He was frustrated in some of his early attempts. And it isn't an improvement, 71.91. He stays and 73.26. That's OK. Fifth place in Group A. I keep saying it. I think Group B might be stronger. Mark Johnson, Ragnar Carlsen, Javier Cienfuego. Nervous wait for them. Surely Quinton B goes okay with a 77 meters and 22. Yeah! Daniel Robert of Hungary is up next. 71.59 so far. We ran about the same. Good recovery from a foul in the. No, no fouls for the Hungarian. One line out. Robert, quite a consistent series, to be honest, around about 70, 71, maybe another 71 metre throw there. <laughs> 71 metres, 14, doesn't manage to improve. Consistent, but not consistently where he would have liked it. Loves it, another three or four metres. So that leaves us with one final competitor here in Group A of the men's discus qualification. Mikhailo Havriluk of Ukraine. He was undefeated coming into this competition. He's managed a fair number of competitions in the 2022 season. It's a great effort from the Ukrainian. Trying to improve 71 metres and 14. And as with so many of these men, he's just found the netting. It'll be a foul for Havriluk. He stays in seventh place. Group A. <laughs> About half.
half an hour till Group B gets underway. That gives the athletes time to come out and warm up. They'll be in the call room underneath the stadium. I'm sure watching, they've got screens down there in the call room, information, tablets and whatnot. So they can keep abreast of the results from Group A. And that will help inform them whether they have to do the full three throws as they move through the second group in this qualification. Iceland to third place in the end. Post Mawson going on among these athletes. Yeah, as Phil Mitchell alluded to, there's so many kind of factors to consider on a morning qualification. It's tough, there's not much of an atmosphere. Uh, working with Dan O'Brien, the Olympic decathlon champion a few weeks ago, and he was saying you can have a, almost a contagious atmosphere um, on a field event. Have a back look, look back at Ragnar Carlsen's best throw. That was 74-65. But when it's not quite happening for anybody, you can start getting frustrated. You share that frustration with your competitors, and you kind of lose that belief um, that it's really going to happen. And it did look like all the men down there just looked a little bit Kind of frustrated rather than excited. Wojciech Nowitzki using all of his experience, the Polish Olympic champion, just to walk in on his first throw and get it done. I think that's kind of the way to go. You don't want to get pulled down in anything that's going on with your competitors. Quinton Bigo, good opening round effort of 77 metres, 22. Backed it up with a 77-11 and then decided that's probably enough. And left the other 11 men to it. They'll now exit the arena together. Back in the warm-up area, Holly Mills, Great Britain, fourth at the World Indoor Championships. We thought that would have signalled a medal at the Commonwealth level, but she had to settle for fourth there as well. So athletes warming up for the heptathlon, of course, what a thrilling conclusion it was last night to the decathlon, and the crowd were roaring throughout. And an exciting competition across two days there is that Adriana Sulek, terrific improvements for her this year and bring some personality as well to the competition as we've seen through the European junior competitions over the last few years. Of course, uh, Nafi Tiam is the one to beat. Here she is just warming up and incredibly she seems to have improved this year in some of her traditionally, let's say, so-called weak events with uh, lifetime bests in the sprint hurdles, including the first event in Eugene and also the 800. Nafi Tiam did look great in Eugene, but I was super impressed by Anouk Vetter's javelin. She kind of looked a bit despondent throughout those two days in Eugene, a bit stressed, a bit tense, um, and then suddenly launched out a huge javelin to pile that pressure on Nafi Tiam. Whatever you want to do. In, the front in the end, Nafi Tiam, the champion that she has kind of responded to get that gold medal. Group B, just keeping themselves cool before they head out to do their discus qualifications. It's great to see Pavel Fidek down there. It's Christos Frandesakis, the other Greek athlete. Frandesakis struggled in Group A. Let's see if his teammate can do any better. Stepping in and Finland. Well, now we see the first track action of this morning just about to commence, and it's the first heat of the heptathlon. 100, 100 metres hurdles, so this is the first of two disciplines this morning, and they're going to move on a bit later on to the high jump. As you can see, we saw pictures of them earlier warming up, including some of the main competitors that we expect to be battling for the medals later on. 
including possibly the favourite, Anouk Vetter of the Netherlands, in this first heat. Well, it's quite a loaded heat. We've got the likes of Maria Vicente, the very good young Spaniard, Ivona Dadic, who was the world's number one heptathlete back in 2020, a season that was obviously disrupted by COVID, but she would have quite possibly have gone to the Paris European Championships if we had been able to stage them as the favourite. Just looking down the track. Well, there was drama yesterday morning during the hurdles when Germany's Artur Abele was disqualified, then reinstated and allowed to have an individual rerun later on in the morning. And the Germans, well, they loved their multi-events. They were cheering Nicholas Cowell to the rafters yesterday. In this competition, they have Caroline Schaefer and Sophie Wiesenberg. Schaefer coming up in one of the later heats. She was the European bronze medalist four years ago in Berlin. She's also a very, very good long jumper. She could have easily have taken part in the individual long jump. Won the World Championship silver medal. With the best of 6839, that would, under normal circumstances, have put her in contention for a medal. Perhaps not operating at that level at the moment. 2021 European list headed by Nafi Tiam with that terrific 6,947 points she scored in Eugene. Vetter, not that far behind her either. So we could see a titanic battle with her, with the likes of Adriana Sulik, Poland, nor. Vids of Belgium. So the presentation for the first heat. Uh, Maria Vicente just emerging. This is her compatriot, Claudia Conte. Conte, last year, silver medal in the European Under-23 Championships when we were in Tallinn. So two Spaniards in this first heat. So, jetzt ist sie wirklich da, die Angekündigte. Hier ist aus Österreich, from Austria, Ivona Dadic. So, Ivana Dadic, I mentioned her, six times Austrian Athlete of the Year. Third in the European Championships in 2016. And the fastest woman in this field with a best of 13.36. Here we have Dorota Skrivanova. A Czech athlete, Skrivanova, four times Czech champion. This one of her better events, along with the long jump and the 800 meters. Yulia Loban of Ukraine. She's an athlete who's been training abroad. She was in Spain for a long period. Tenth earlier this year in Belgrade, not long after the war in her country started. And Bianca Salming of Sweden. By contrast, slowest woman in this field has improved to 14.33 this year. And we saw yesterday a few of the decathletes setting personal best despite this early hour of the morning. So I just wonder if Salming, well, maybe this is the occasion for her to finally break 14 seconds. So there you see the lineup. Kate O'Connor, sadly, after a silver medal in Birmingham just two weeks ago, a non-starter here. So, the very first track action, this on the third day of the Munich 2022 European Athletics Championships. As they settle down, it's Vicente of Spain, Dadic, Austria, Loban, Ukraine, Ligarska, Poland, nobody in lane five, Salming of Sweden, Skrivanova of Czech Republic and Conte of Spain on the outside. Sad. Stand up, please. Well, just asking to the stand up. And we're looking at Bianca Salming as the slowest woman in the field. She's wanting to try and get every advantage. Although, as we said on many occasions during the decathlon, it's not a question of where you finish, it's your performances turned into points. Salming, I wonder if she didn't hear 
the set. She was very late to rise. So I presume it could be a warning for something or they might just recall it all. I think it's just probably going to be a green card. I also saw Mireia Vicente twitching away there as well. So they settle down once again. Keep an eye on lanes one and two. Vicente and Dadic, the two fastest women in this field. Set. And indeed it is Vicente who's away very quickly. Also Loban in lane three alongside Dadic. But now Dadic starting to motor. She's up on the shoulder of Vicente. Vicente still leading, but Dadic came off that last hurdle the better and takes the win. Unofficially 13.72 for Ivona Dadic of Austria, followed home by Maria Vicente on her inside. So a good start to proceedings for Ivona Dadic. Adjusted to 13.70, so season's best for the Austrian. Maria Vicente, 13.84. Hasn't run 100 hurdles this year. I'm not sure she'll be too pleased with that. I think she'd probably be hoping for a couple of tenths faster. Scrivanova, 13.92 in third. It's a nice run of Ivana that it she's obviously so so good on her day when she can get it right and to come out all guns blazing here in a technical event you can see Dadic didn't get the best first couple of hurdles so it was a race to the first hurdle these high hurdles and Ivana Dadic then got into her running pulled her side herself ahead of the Spanish athlete to her inside but Ivana Dadic with 13.7 50 points or so, something like that. Ivana Dadic all smiles and waves to the crowd in this opening event. We've got a second heat making their way out. The organisers quite rightly keeping the athletes under the shade as much as they can, just bring them out at the last minute. Two Dutch women in this heat. So when we have the kind of open individual events, they'll separate different nations so they kind of avoid each other. So if you had three athletes and there were three races, you'd get them in separate heats. But here in the heptathlon, it's more done on the seeding so the athletes can push each other and kind of encourage each other to faster times. It's much better to be in a competitive heat than one when you're miles off the front or miles off the back. You saw that with Ivana Dadic, to be honest, having those other athletes to aim at after her first couple of hurdles and brought out the best in the Austrian. Yeah, Deb, Dadic, uh, previous medalist at these championships in Amsterdam um, in 2016, where the title was won by Anouk Vetter, who we'll see go in the final heat of three. So it'll be really interesting to see that battle. Of course, uh, Veta, as you said, had a fantastic heptathlon in Eugene as well and proved that Tiam isn't completely untouchable. But by the end of things, the Belgian finished off with the 800 metres fantastically well. And I just wonder what uh, Veta has to give at these championships. It, it tends to be a, a bit of a battle of Benelux, doesn't it? Because you've also got Norvids who won the European Indoor Pentathlon title as well. And Emma Oosterwegel, the youngster, who came through superbly to win the bronze at the Tok Tokyo uh, Olympic Games last year. It could be interesting we reflect back on that men's decathlon. Nicholas Cowell, it, it didn't look comfortable in Oregon. It was a bit of a struggle for him. And Emma Oosterwegel took a long time to get into her her events and sort of looked like she was building any momentum. Uh, could we see a bit of a sort of comeback? I wonder if some of the athletes, and Norvitz as well, brilliant indoors, and I think she'd struggled with injuries in the first part of the outdoor season. You know, we're another month on from those World Championships. The likes of Norvitz and Emma Oosterbeegel could perhaps be kind of poised to give us their very best. This first event will give us plenty of clues. Jade O'Dowder of Great Britain and Northern Ireland is the first to be presented to the crowd. 
inspired bronze medal at the Commonwealth Games. Jada Dowda started her athletics journey at the same club as me, Oxford City AC in the United Kingdom. Lane eight will go to Carolyn Schaefer of Germany. She took a silver medal in 2017 at the World Championships. A bronze last time round in Berlin at the European Championships. And she was the athlete who was controversially not selected for the World Championships. We gathered her focus. She said in the press conference that she was totally committed to performing in front of a home crowd. The Italian, Saviva Giovanni, will go in lane two. She's done a personal best this year. Seven time international champion for Italy over various events. Multi event is often picking up medals here, there, and everywhere. Sophie Dotka of the Netherlands will go in lane seven. European junior silver medalist. Talon last year. Second German, Sophie Weissenberg. Going to get a big roar from the crowd. She was highlighted in the press conference as well as one of the athletes to watch. Silver medalist in the under 23 championships last year round. And like I said, we saw in the core room no marked in the long jump in the world champs. She's got a few hours to go until that. Saga Vanenin was the European Junior and World Junior champion. A great double. Jonathan Kapitonik of Israel did that double as well, but he really struggled in the high jump qualification last night. Perhaps carrying an injury and perhaps Saga Vanenin can do a little bit better. Holly Mills will go in lane four. She was just seven points off a medal at the World Indoor Championships and then another fourth place at the Commonwealth Games. Let's see if we have some redemption for Holly Mills of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Completing the lineup in lane five is Emma Ostervegel. Olympic Games bronze medal last year behind Nafi TM and Anouk Vetter, largely down to a brilliant javelin throw. She's coached by Ronald Vetter, Anouk Vetter's dad. As I said, Emma Ostervegel. It took a long time for her to smile when we were in Eugene. She looked full of tension. Perhaps Ushta Bagel release some of that tension and can have a brilliant performance here in Munich instead. Holly Mills, the fastest this season with 13.41. Carolyn Schaefer on your in lane eight, the fastest on personal best, just a shade outside 13 seconds. So a good season's best from Ivana Dadic to win the first heat in 13.7. Each tenth of a second worth 15 points to these women. Been a cruel high stakes technical event to start off the he women's heptathlon. Set. <laughs> anyway, Holly Mills. Perhaps rising to that first hurdle first. Jade O'Dowda had a brilliant Commonwealth Games personal best in a couple of events. High jump and long jump. But here comes Emma Ustabegel and Carolyn Schaefer and Emma Ustabegel. Clipped. That's the seventh or eighth hurdle there. Went down hard. Let's see Emma Ustabegel there lying on the track. Unfortunately, it is not going to be a fairy tale end to the 2022 season for Emma Ustabegel. Let's hope she's all right. She's not injured. You could see her teammate Sophie Dotka look over straight away and in the end Schaefer was a runaway victor 13-39 and a season's best well I think you used the word cruel actually to describe the event before it got going Ustervegel as we said the Olympic bronze medalist last year fantastic competition that was for her the way she came through on the second day but uh, not the way you want to see a heptathlon start and understandably Pretty upset. Good to see the sportsmanship, as we always see the camaraderie among the multi-eventers. And uh, Wiesenberg, the German, also comes over to console her. Emma Ustabegel, I do. I do think the men start with 100 flat, don't they? I think that's a, a little bit kinder. I think starting with 100 meter hurdles, when you're full of nerves and anticipation, yeah. we've mentioned the early time in the morning. And Sophie Weissenberg, an athlete that knows what it's like to pick up no points in a discipline, doing that in the long jump out in Oregon. Well, I doubt we're going to see Emma Ustabegel in the next six events. It's devastating for the Dutch Olympic bronze medalist. Absolutely, yes. Well, I suppose they're used to it, aren't they, starting off with the hurdles. For many of them, of the athletes here, it is a very strong event as well. 
penultimate hurdle there. Let's see if we can get a head on look. I think she clipped her trail leg perhaps on this next hurdle here. Nope. That one looks, she looked so good until now, and it was her knee. And you can see what that does to your momentum. When you're doing high hurdles, you don't want to clear them by too much. That's wasting energy. You want to be nice and close over the hurdles, and they do move a little bit. But Emma Ostrovegel hit that square on with her knee, totally took her momentum, much like Askel, Axel van Christensen in the men's steeplechase yesterday. And Emma Ostrovegel falling really hard. Schaefer looked really good there for me. She has had a summer of training getting ready for this versus some of these other women that would have had to take a break from training to go and compete in Oregon. Karen Schaefer looking pretty good at the moment. So the athletes coming out for heat number three. You can see that Anouk Vetter coming through, Adriana Sulek towards the back. Sulek this year in Warsaw improved to 13.08. And very strong this year in Gutsis and then in Eugene, improving to a new overall national record for Poland of 6,672 points. A lot of big hitters in this. Nafi Tiam, of course, two-time Olympic champion, two-time world defending European champion, having also won European indoors. Anik Vetter, world and Olympic silver medalist. 6,867 points for her in Eugene. So those hurdles just being put back up in a moment's time for those athletes to get their competition underway this morning. And Nafi Tiam, always such a joy to watch. We don't always know what form she's in, has had a few injury niggles over the years, and sometimes despite that, she's carried through and on, just like we so often see some of the decathletes do. And here's, uh, so. Here is Adriana Sulek, who as I said, brings the character to the competition sometimes. She does have a couple of weak events, particularly in the javelin, a bit more of a rudimentary technique, but someone who is really improving. And it's interesting how those who have been at the European under-20s and under-23s do really form most of the participants coming through towards the senior ranks. All of these have been competing as heptathletes for a while. Leonie Cambour of France. This is Annick Carlin of Switzerland. She was sixth at the World Championships in Eugene. 6,464 points. Of course, a lot of these athletes taking part in the specialist Goetz's hyper meeting. Familiar facing one another. Here's a very familiar face, Nafi Tiam of Belgium then. So, just when you think there isn't too many improvements for her to make. 13.21 in Eugene to start her heptathlon. And win yet another title. Senja Klishan of Hungary, European indoor pentathlon bronze medalist. Potential medal contender, if she can pull it all together. Of course, we've lost Emma Ustervegel, so someone else has a chance of getting closer to that rostrum. Annick Vetter having a terrific season. She remarked that after winning the European Championships in Amsterdam, she became a bit of a star in the Netherlands and actually took a bit of time to get to grips with that and the extra attention and pressure. It was around the time that Daphne Schippers, of course, also became a big star in the Dutch team. Norwitz. It seems harsh to call her the number two Belgian, doesn't it? Because she's fairly consistent across all events. But we're kind of remarking yesterday with Dina Asher-Smith and Daryl Nita, sometimes the number two, maybe they can just do fewer media interviews and expend less energy at the major championships and get on with their competition. 
Well, there are times when Nafi Tiam wouldn't have been in the faster heat of the three, the last one in the heptathlon, but she's here now, and I think that helps her. <laughs> Not that she needs additional support, but uh, being with the fastest woman can sometimes push you on to your best. Sometimes, we have seen in the past, her previous competitors like uh, Jessica Ennis-Hill have relished the opportunity to get as much of a lead as possible in the first event over Tiam. Bit of a different story here. So, Kambor, Tiam, Vetter, Witz, Krishan, Karlin and Sulek. So, last heat of the heptathlon. And it looked like Sulek might have got away a bit early there. So, obviously, slightly different conditions in terms of false starts compared to the individual sprint events. Yellow cards traditionally given. So you're watching live coverage then. Day three of these European Athletics Senior Championships. And Hannah, yeah, you spotted Sulek there on the outside. And they will do get a whole false start for the field um, in the field event. Okay, so Krishan awarded with sort of an illegal that 0.1 reaction time. That's what's allowed for both Krishan and Sulek moved too early so the whole field will get a red card and then if anyone else false starts after this then that's a disqualification perhaps the, the high stake issues of this event sort of neutralizing that rule leaving us a little bit where the rest of the individual events were a few years ago because it's really really high stakes so perhaps some nerves from Adriana Sudek and Zina Krishan. Yeah I mean even the sprint events we saw initially at one point a yellow card for moving so early that it was before the start effectively and then a false start Arto Abale in the decathlon was reinstated and had to run a solo race just a second after completing the discus it seemed and before starting the pole vault so just waiting for what the officials are going to say start in lane six and in lane eight so lanes six and lane eight you can see there yellow card being shown and indeed across that field. So, athletes do look like they've got the sun in their eyes. Now refocusing and getting on with the job. Once again, Kambur, Tiam, Vetter, Vids, Krishan, Karlin and Sulek. The pole on the outside in lane eight. As we look down at Tiam from three. Set. <laughs> Decent start there for Campbell right on the inside. Now Tiam starting to come through. Kalin also going very well for Switzerland in the red. And now she's leading with Witz chasing her. Fantastic win there for Anik Karlin of Switzerland. So one of the young contenders gaining some experience at senior level and starting her head tap on off fantastically well there. 1323, that's worth 1,090 points to begin this head tap on. Well, it wasn't the quickest of starts by Anik Kalin, but once she got into her running, that was absolutely fabulous. And it was really tidy, clean hurdling, and she was moving so quickly between the barriers as well. She was up on Tiam, who was probably one of the faster starters on the inside. Of course, they were separated by several lanes. And then Ka Kalin just got into her running in the second half of the race. Yeah, 13.23, Witz came through. 13.29 for Norvitz, that's 1,081 points. As we see there, the start of the race again. Poor start from Sulek, perhaps just wanting to make sure that she didn't actually catch the attention of the judges again, but Kalin, head on shot. That's very, very classing hurdling indeed. She'd probably almost be worthy of a place on the Swiss team in the individual event with the time and an effort like that. Callum has set that Swiss national record already this season. And uh, we saw some season's best 
uh, from Dadic and Schaefer in the opening two rounds. We didn't in this. It could be because these women have done a few more high-quality heptathlons this season, or it might be as a result of that false start. But both uh, Kushan and Silek are really sluggish out of the blocks. Like you said, Phil, perhaps nervous, kind of knowing they'd got it wrong in the previous heat. I'm Ooh. surprised not to see any more seasons rest in the athletes, but like I say, they've been, a lot of them have been having a great season already. Also, just noticing that they were running into a very slight breeze that would have actually helped them in some respects technically, although in the case of the women's hurdles, less so than the men, but it would have probably just ratcheted back the times just slightly. But nevertheless, Annie Callin, fastest time of the three heats this morning. So there is the full confirmed result. Callin from uh, Vitz Tiam Vetter. And then uh, Schaefer's performance, as you can see there, from the uh, earlier heat. And very, very close as a result. You've got the top five separated by 24 points in those overall standings. And it will be a shame if we get to that final page. See Emma Ustervigel not finishing the hurdles, made it all the way to the penultimate hurdle before crashing it with her knee and hitting the deck. So the bronze medalist, I don't think, for the Olympic Games last, last year, I don't think Emma Ustervigel will take part anymore. Yeah, those predictions, perhaps, uh, <laughs> maybe you can read a little bit more into them than you can the decathlon. Maybe a bit more like to go to form. Tiam and Vetter, that would seem a, a sensible prediction. And Adriana Sulek predicted to get the bronze medal. We'll see what kind of form she's in off the back of an uh, excellent uh, performance in Eugene and whether Krishan can pull things all together. Well, of course, the next event is the high jump, and that is very much Nafi TM's speciality. She could be jumping well into the 190s, and I'm sure racking up the points there, we could see a big change around in at least the top order, top three or four women. Just getting a quick look at the Group B of Men's Hammer warming up down there. We did hear there was going to be a slight delay to the start. They were due to get underway two or three minutes ago. Five minute delay would mean we're coming up to 10.55 local time. As I said as we moved our way through Group A, I do think this Group B is a tiny bit stronger. Norwegian Ivan Henriksen is keeping himself in the shade great bronze medal he picked up in Oregon. And, uh, <laughs> Pavel Fidet, the I commentated on the Continental Tour Gold uh, that took place in Nairobi, and it was this torrent of messages that came through around about 75 minutes before we were online saying, Pavel Fidet missed his flight. And uh, I think there were some pictures on social media of him happily leaving his home in Poland to head for his connecting flight to Frankfurt, and then radio silence. Yeah, made the connection onto Nairobi. Well, Fajdek was actually saying he's going to drive to his comp this competition, even though it's about six hours away from his home in Poland, because he didn't want to actually miss any flights, make sure he got here and ensure that any of his equipment didn't, didn't go missing as well. So he's been in, in a car, albeit probably a couple of days ago, on his way to Munich, just making sure that he's here and in time. And all his equipment, all his hammers, all his personal equipment has come with him. And we were talking last night, maybe you want to just expand on this, about the issue with equipment and the throwers. You can bring your own equipment, but you've got to actually make it available to everybody. But most people know which is their own equipment, and it, at this level, I mean, yes, of course, in extremis, they do tend to share equipment if somebody's suddenly got a broken hammer cable or something like that but they usually use their own equipment, but it has to technically be made available to everybody. Just thought I'd let you know. Well, there's all sorts of drama. We saw a lot of athletes clipping the edge of the cage. We see that in the discus, and that can affect the weight of it. You know, if you think you're almost you're chipping tiny bits off of, it, off an implement, denting it and affecting it, it can come under pressure throughout the season. Well, the referees do have the power to disqualify implements that are badly damaged during the course of competition that's why there are some implements made available for general use and of course they do have to be checked beforehand by the technical officials just to make sure they're the right weight or the cable in the case of the hammer is the right length 
Kilo Kokkan just brushing the side of the cage with his opening effort. It's going to be a shade over 75 metres. He came fourth in Tokyo last year and became the youngest ever 80 plus metre thrower. It's 80 metres, 78, still just 21 years old. Seventh at the World Championships. Nice to see him smiling. We didn't see Michaela Kotkan smile very much out in Eugene. 75 metres, 8 centimetres. Good start. List Spence Hallas is his hero. Let's see Mr Hallas throwing seventh. A few more men to work our way through before then. Alexandros Porsanidis of, Cypri of Cyprus. Porsanidis, there we go. Get my self around that name. Big sixth round throw in Birmingham a few weeks ago. Put himself up into the bronze medal position. Cyprus, another nation with a busy summer. Not too many nations that were eligible for all three championships. Paul Sanadis. Oh, nope. Right into the netting on the left hand side. So, Alexandros Paul Sanadis foul in the first round. So Cyprus having a, a good season of athletics as well, winning medals at the European under 18s, including in the hammer. Valentina Sava looks terrific. Won medals at the Commonwealth Games as well in the men's discus, and I think one other, I can't quite remember, but it was in the throws for sure. I can't quite remember whether it was the women's. Um, no, it was the women's discus as well, I think they won. So Cyprus, one of four European nations which could also compete in the Commonwealth Games, along with Great Britain, Malta and Gibraltar. Malta and Gibraltar, with the greatest respect, glad to see their athletes here. Nobody who strikes me immediately as a medal contender. Mentia building some momentum in the circle. Three fouls in Eugene in qualification, so that's a better start already. Oh no, it has been given the red flag. Comencia may be stepping out the front of the circle on purpose. 2018 shot put and discus though, NCA champion. I don't think he was entered for the men's discus, men's shot put. Just doing the discus here. And he's done 75 metres and 21 centimetres this season. Just a reminder, if you weren't with us in the first heat, the automatic qualifying mark is 77 metres, 50 centimetres. Volchek Nowitzki, the only athlete to have hit that so far with his first round effort of 78 metres, 78. Quinton Bigo, best of the rest in that other group, 77 metres, 22. Just to sort of cut it down the middle if we're looking for 12 ath athletes. Sixth place in the first heat was Daniel Raba of Hungary with 71 metres, 59 centimetres. Comencia just having a bit of a chat with the officials there. Perhaps not happy with the positioning of the cage. This is round to Sergei Markev of Moldova, national record holder with 78 72. Not too far off that this season, 77 metres 90. Markev could hit that with his first round throw. He would be a very happy man. One of eight athletes in this field to have hit the automatic qualifying mark this season so far in other competitions. And Mark Markev, like that, it's going to be just short of the 75 metre line. Won't challenge Michaela Kotkan's 70 meet, 75 metres and five centimetres in the opening round. But Good throwing from the Moldovan. Patiently waiting for his measurement. It's very warm in this direct sunlight. I've got seating areas you can see behind with the group b written on the lid that's providing a bit of shade not very much though 
so there's so many cooling techniques being used out on the roads with the race walks and the marathons. And we often see the endurance athletes warming up with a ice vest around them. The officials taking a very close look at this. I wonder if there might be a foot foul for Marquis of, of Moldova. Nope, it has been measured. 74 metres, 26 centimetres up into second place. Yeah, it's actually going to get hotter, but the session's organised to avoid the hottest part of the day in which it will rise over 30 degrees with highs of 31 in uh, Munich. Humidity of around 42%, just to give you an idea. It's pretty warm, and you're right, Alex, we've got a pretty long morning session today, as you did yesterday, and then a later start. They wait until about 8pm to get some of the big finals underway. Left-hand thrower, Lippola, so they would have arranged the cage ever so kind of different angles for the Finnish athlete. And it's going to be a foul in the first round. He's pretty close to his 2008 personal best this season. You commented on this in the first group. But there's not that many left-handed throws, are there? No, there really aren't. No, and I, think, I always think it's interesting in the discus and they talk about which direction the wind's coming from, whether that favours a left-hand thrower or a right-hand thrower because um, the, the discus will rotate in a different direction. I don't think it's as uh, delicate in the, in the hammock as the implement sort of flying straight through the air. Um, but there is a bit of a delay as the officials sort of scurry in and move the gates. Were there any in the first group? I can't, I don't I, think there were. I don't think were. so, I didn't spot, I didn't, you were we're, just We were commenting seeing. on it and I don't think I, in the end, I was paying attention. I don't, don't recall anybody throwing left-handed and any cages being moved around. I don't think there were. Martinski of Poland has thrown a personal best of 77 metres and one centimetre this season. Didn't make the final out in Oregon. Had to watch Polchik Nowitzki and Pavel Fidek fly the flag for Poland. Solid opener from Martinski. Halfway between that 70 and 75 metre line. One meters, 86 centimeters for Rotinski. Had three fouls and three valid throws. Been quite competitive so far. I did think the quality in this second group might be higher. Took a lot of the other athletes in Group A a while to get comfortable with that 70 meter line and push beyond it. Ben Talents up next. He threw a personal best out in Oregon to pick up fifth place. 80 metres, 15. A bronze medal in Doha. He was very good in qualification at the World Championships. Could we see that? Oh, Hungarian managed to stay in that circle first. And that's a great throw. Oh, just like I said before in the qualification round, we've got a lot of glare on our computer screen here. But to the naked eye, it looks like the official is lowering the measuring stick to the left-hand side of the qualifying mark. So Ben Tallis could be repeating what he managed in Oregon, matching the performance of Volchik Nowitzki and just having one throw to automatically qualify for the final. If that's, if they decide that's okay, he's dancing around that mark there in that. 77 meters, 72 has been measured and awarded but Hallens was some drama with him in Doha as well the Polish team appealing one of his throws I think maybe it was a foot foul but Hallens successfully hitting the automatic qualifying distance this morning and we head over to the men's high 400 meter hurdles as we did on the women's side, some of these athletes will have had a bye, but we have got eight men down there in this opening round. Yes, it's the first heat of the men's 400 metres hurdles, first of four. And the qualifying conditions, well, rather generous. First three go through out of right, and then two fastest non-automatic qualifiers go through to tomorrow's semi-finals. Well, we're just picking out a couple of the athletes, and this is Martin Cuthera, 32 years of age. World Student Games champion back in 2013. And then 
we switch over to the inside and Vit Muller, three times, five times Czech champion, semi-finalist at the 2016 European Championships when he was a teenager. So just to give you the full lineup from lane two, it's Vit Muller, Czech Republic, Giacomo Bertoncelli of Italy, Martin Cusser of Slovak Republic, Julian Bonvin of Switzerland, Jacob Paul of Great Britain, Northern Ireland, the 2019 UK champion and a former European under-20 medalist. And on the outside in lane seven, Victor Corolla of France. <laughs> Keep an eye on Cochera, he's run 49-18 this season. Also Corolla out on the outside and it's Corolla who's running well at the moment, running a a solo effort here because he's unable to see the men on his inside until he comes round into the second bend. It's Bonvin of Switzerland also having a very good run at the moment. So it's Corolla on the outside, Bonvin on the Switzerland with three flights to go. Jacob Paul also up there and it's becoming fairly, fairly clear. Well, as I say that on the inside, Vip Muller, Czech Republic, coming through very strongly down the home straight. But on the outside at the moment, it's Paul. Carolla just takes it from Jacob Paul and on his inside, Julian Bonvin. So it's France, Great Britain, Northern Ireland, Switzerland. And despite his fast finish, Vip Muller will have to wait and see whether he's done good, well enough to progress through to tomorrow's semi finals. So officially 49.35 from Corolla. So just 24 hundredths away from his personal best. Jacob Paul, 49.40. He shaves nine hundredths off his best. And 49.41 for Bonvin, also very close to his best. So some very good running at this time of the morning in this first heat of the men's 400 meters hurdles. You might wonder why the athletes, when it's first three automatically through to those semi-finals tomorrow morning, why they're battling all the way to the line. In these events where they compete in lanes, it matters for the lane draw. Jacob Paul stuttered into that penultimate hurdle, gathered himself here, and again it was a stutter off that hurdle. So the Brit doing really well to get a personal best, but there could be more in the tank for Jacob Paul. Victor Corolla of France, the strongest in the last 50 metres coming out just in the closing few stages. Julian Bonvin, third by one hundredth of a second. When they do that semi-final draw, I wonder if Julian Bonvin will rue that hundredth of a second and he was beaten by Jacob Paul. One of the other reasons we often see fast times in the heats of 400 metres hurdles is, of course, the technical aspect. Once you start slowing down, you lose your stride pattern, you lose all rhythm. So you've really got to keep going flat out and make sure that you actually do keep your stride pattern nailed down as we see the final results. And it was Corolla confirmed as the winner. 49.35 for the Frenchman and former European under-20 champion. You're right, Phil, it's, it's kind of hard to not do of flat out four hurdles similar with the high hurdles similar with some of these technical events as well you know a 90 percent effort hammer throw isn't going to really make sense to your body and your muscle memory fantasakis of greece he's looking a bit sluggish there not much speed but that's a good distance fantasakis kind of deceptive there with a slightly sluggish relaxed throwing style, perhaps a, a safety throw in the first round, we might see the Greek athlete prove me wrong. And so you can do an 80% hammer throw and get a safe mark in. It's short of the automatic qualifying mark, 77 metres and 50. But 76 metres, 33 centimetres, great first round effort for Frandisakis. Can I afford to say he can now take the fetters off? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's that time in the morning. <laughs> Ivan Henriksen is such a championship performer. Pushed himself up into bronze medal in Oregon. He punches the air with that effort. It's below the automatic qualify mark, but a great throw nonetheless from Ivan Henriksen.
So these men in Group B and Hammer qualification seem to have come out a little bit more success than Group A. We saw an awful lot of fouls, throws below 70 metres as we saw Group A. Henriksen, 77 metres, 27 short of the automatic qualifying mark. Ben Tallis has already done that. Maybe he has packed his bags and left. Moving through that first round in the men's discus. It so often does in these morning sessions, the momentum building. We've had Group A in the men's discus. Had three heats of the heptathlon 100 metre hurdles. And now we're into the second heat of the men's 400 hurdles. Nehom Jürger of Switzerland will go in lane eight. Sebastian Ovenak of Poland in lane six. He's done a personal best this year. Lane five goes to Alex Porras of Spain coached by his father. They've pushed him to a personal best this year. Lane four is Mathieu Bolsch of the Slovak Republic. First season at 4 meter, meter hurdles, I think. Previously a sprint hurdler. Ramsey Angela of the Netherlands goes in lane three. Brilliant part of the Dutch 4x4 four four team helping them pick up a silver medal at the Olympics last year. Perhaps a surprise to see Ramsey Angela in this first round. He's not done particularly fast this year. Neither has Thomas Barr. He was fourth place at the Rio Olympics. Picked up a bronze last time round in Berlin at the European Championships. But he has had significant Achilles struggle. And uh, I do worry about the tight inside line for Ireland's Thomas Barr. Not ideal to be in lane two. It's better than lane one. Thomas Barr has, had, has raced very lightly in this 2022 season. And we joked about the fact he had to do this first round. And he said, well, to be honest, I need the races. Anouk, wait, wait, wait. Please come inside at the start. No, no. I think we can hear some noise there from the officials. <coughs> they are happy that the race can get underway. Fastest on personal best by some margin is Thomas Barr of Ireland in lane two. Fought supremely well out in Oregon to make the semi-final. Put on a good showing there in his green vest. And Thomas Bart striding away in line, lane two. He's got everybody to shoot at outside of him. Ramsey Angela looked a little bit ragged over that hurdle and he's going to come under some more pressure from Thomas Barr. Thomas Barr of Ireland, I think, rising first at the moment. Sebastian Urbaniak of Poland giving it a good go out in lane six. Got three hurdles left to go, two left to go, and it is Urbaniak and Thomas Barr. And Ramsey's coming back into the picture. Rough hurdle there for the Polish athlete. Thomas Barr strides, over striding into that last hurdle, trying to regain his momentum. But Ramsey Angela might have paced this best. Thomas Barr on the dip, 49-49. And like we say, that will give him a kinder, perhaps an easier semi-final. Ramsey Angela must have relaxed first 200 metres and built his momentum through the race. Terrific stuff from Thomas Barr. He was really disappointed after the World Championships and joked that he could have run the 50.0 uh, time in his sleep that he did there, and he just didn't have the sharpness on that occasion, but here looking much, much better. Delightful for him. You mentioned that terrific performance in Rio, national record after national record. They've been in time since then where he uh, could have been on course for better, but such a difficult race to put together at times. So much uh, structure and planning that goes in. Ramsey Angela, another improving athlete, an important part of the Dutch relay team. And I just wondered who would win that, whether they would just settle for second place. But uh, Angela looking good also. Mattia Bolsch delighted when he saw his name flick up on the screen for that third automatic qualifying point. Abeniak of Poland did push himself into a second of the non-automatic qualifying spots. So we just go over these final three hurdles. Angela Ramsey had built some tremendous mem momentum. Sebastian Abeniak, oh, the bad hurdle there, just lost his momentum. Thomas Barr having to overstride, committing to a stride pattern into that final hurdle. And then shorten his stride, try to regain that momentum to keep himself ahead of the Dutch athlete, but you can see these athletes know how many strides they want to take between the hurdles. Thomas Barr using all the endurance we see on show from these 400 meter hurdlers to muscle out that final 50 meters and take the win. It's been terrific to see the progression 
internationally of this event over the last few years. And uh, just to get some idea of what it means, the stride pattern, the uh, sprint speed between the hurdles, and so many technical specifics involved. It's our first look at the five-time world champion, Pavel Fidek. That he doesn't really like qualification, finds it stressful. It took him three throws to make the final at the World Championships. Uh, I think Pavel Fidak would have been happy to be, see his name down for Group B, another hour's sleep or so. So fast in the circle. And the consistency he's shown picking up five consecutive world titles is so impressive. We saw Sandra Perkovic pick up her sixth consecutive European title. Fidex managed that on a world stage. 75 metres, 78 in the first round. A modest fourth for the Polish superstar. That takes us into the second round here in Group B. Kylo Kotkan, good effort in the opening round of 75 metres and, five, and eight centimetres. Puts him in fifth place. Another 75 meter plus throw to me to the naked eye. It's more than eight centimeters over the 75 meter line. Kalo Kotkan mentioned it before. Fourth at the Tokyo Olympics, youngest athlete ever to exceed 80 meters with the hammer. Just seventh in the World Championships. Just illustrating the difficulties our athletes in Ukraine have had with training. 75 meters 48 Kotkan that's improved his distance but not his placing so going on to uh, heat number three of the men's 400 meter hurdles this is the toughest heat really so we have a look along this lineup with that Mario Lambrugi of Italy on the outside, one of those who has gone sub 49 seconds in the past as the Italian champion. Jesus Delgado of Spain won bronze at the Ibero American Championships, UPB of uh, 49.53. Josh Folds, the brother of Ed, who won the European junior title over the 400 flat this year, coming in after the withdrawal of Alistair Chalmers. Dries van Neuvenhove, Belgium. We just went past there. Thomas Lettinen in Finland. 51-19 in Turku in June. So an outsider to qualify. Leninjak of Poland. And then Stromaya Dangl right there on the inside going for Austria. On your marks. Well, three of these athletes sub 50 seconds. And Lambrugi, you'd expect to be the fastest. Let's see how this one will pan out. Stromaya Dangle, Olednijak, Lettinen, Van Neuvenhove, Folds, Delgado, and Lambrugi. So once again, it will be the top three going through automatically, and then two time qualifiers through to those semi finals, where some of the faster athletes will already be waiting. So, decent getaway on the outside there. Folds going nicely. Senior international competition debut for him. Look at Olenizak in the white of Poland there. Now moving past at Leighton and the Finn. So, quite a few new names to this kind of top stage. Sun once again glistening right through the Olympia Stadion. And Lenizak still looking strong. Who saves something for the home straight, though? Lambrugi just starting to come into his own, really. Delgado in second. Van Neuvenhove in third place. Bit of a stutter there from Delgado. Just held his balance crucially. So Lambrugi comes through in 50-28. In the end, he didn't quite need to be at his best. That's, uh, what, 1.3 seconds off his... Uh, Season's best in 2022. On the outside, a little bit blind on the outside, but quite 
All right, for Lambrugi, who makes it through reasonably comfortably. Delgado coming through down the home straight in 50.61 behind him as the time for Lambrugi given officially as 50.27. So that, of course, leaves us uh, with one more heat to come. Well, that was quite an authoritative run from Lambrugi. I was watching and he was rising first from about the second hurdle and really just was never seriously challenged at that point. Folds, Delgado all got up there and showed good form. Folds drifting back outside the top three in the end, but was very much in the race at the outset. So Lambrugi, you can just see. Nicely done by the Italian. And he was also running well within himself as well. So that's the way you should really run a heat. He was a good metre or so ahead. Down the back straight at the halfway point, came into the turn in the lead. Delgado having to battle, having to work just that little bit harder to hold off the Belgian than Nuenhover. So Lambrugi starting to make a little bit of a return to form to the type of times he was setting in 2018 when he set his personal best of 48.99. It's been running close to that this year. Just wondering whether he can finally improve on that personal best come tomorrow's semi-final. First two heats saw a load of sub-50 second clockings. So it's no surprise that Muller and Urbaniak stay in the hot seats. They take two non-automatic qualifiers alongside the nine automatic top three finishes. It was Delgado. And then um, Nuenhova, who joined Lambrugi from this heat. Stromer Dangle just missing out on a place in the semi finals. Do athletes routinely put on sun cream in these conditions, or do they just uh, hope they're only out there for a few minutes? It's hard. I think you'd probably tough it out different if you were doing a very long event. It's obviously, sunburn's pretty dangerous, but uh, it can block a lot of sweating. Uh, particularly, you know, unless you've got really technical sun cream, it can actually be quite difficult to see the heat stroke and athletes if they don't use kind of sports specific sun cream. Nick Miller retained his Commonwealth Games title in Birmingham a few weeks ago. 72 67 in the first round, only good enough for seventh place at the moment. Overall, I need 73 26. You want to be in the top 12 as they combine the two groups. Nick Miller looks like he could have made an improvement there. That national record over 80 metres back in 2018. He's been very consistent this year. He did make the final out in Oregon. And then picked up that gold medal at the Commonwealth Games. So Alex settles to your question. I mean, yeah, you could have some, you should have sun cream on down there for a field event. They're out there for a long time. So 76 and 9 centimetres to Nick Miller improving to fourth place. And, and you know, you are sweating, but not to the point where you're sort of worrying about your core body temperature. Yeah. Um, in the same way a marathon runner or a, or a you know, triathlete or race walker or someone like that that's out there for a very long time. Well, I said it because I saw Josh Fold's skin really directly in the sunlight. And I know his parents are very keen watchers of these streams. So uh, <laughs> that's something with my parent hat on. <laughs> well, hopefully Joshua Folds has got his sun cream on because it's really warm. Great to see a little bit of this shade just for the final heat. Right, so it's the fourth and final heat of the men's 400 metres hurdles. We've seen some impressive running already during these preceding three heats. So we've got seven men out there. Man to look out for Danny Brind, I think, in lane four, the very good Swiss athlete who's making really big strides this year. Indeed, many of the men in this field have actually improved this year. There's only one or two who haven't set their personal bests during 2022. There's Constantine Priest. Priest, very well known athlete. One of Germ being Germany's number one 400 meter hurdler for some time. There we see Urkelani, the San Marino athlete. On his inside, Danny Brind, who I mentioned. As we 
switch through. Two Czech of Czech Republic and Sam Derbyshire on the inside. Derbyshire, possibly one of the men we'd be looking for to go through in the three non-automatic qualifying spots. Schmidt as well, very good Dutchman. So very evenly matched. So from the inside, we've got Seamus Derbyshire. I think I called him Sam a moment ago. 2019 European under 20 silver. Outside here, Martin Tuszek. Heats at the last European Championships. Danny Brind, 26 years of age, has a best of 48.96 from last year. Erkelina Volta of San Marino, Schmidt of the Netherlands, Priest of Germany, and Holub of Poland. And it's Brind who does indeed start very quickly, although it can be deceptive. He's overtaken the San Marino athlete within the f first echelon. Uh, but Brind is now really running well. Smith as well, just on his inside, having a very good race at this stage. Priest struggling a little bit. I think the Germans were expecting him to bring a little bit more to this morning's session. But it's definitely Danny, Danny Brend. And it's Brind coming through well on the outside. Around the bend has been Holub. Now Priest starting to motor after a very, very conservative first half of the race. So Priest now to the roars of the crowd. He's the first to rise at the last barrier and it's Priest now starting to pull away in the final metres. It's going to be very tight for that second and third spot though. A blanket finish behind Constantine Priest. Well, the five times German champion, the German number one for a number of years. He looked as though he was struggling during the first half of the race as Danny Brind really had a very, very fast first 200 metres, but he was just running his own race and keeping plenty in reserve until he came off the bend and really attacked hard down the home straight. 49.63 for Konstantin Priest, followed home by Nick Schmidt. Just outside 49 seconds, 50.06 for the Dutchman. And Seamus Derbyshire gets the third automatic qualifying spot. And I can confirm that Martin Tuchek will also go through as a fastest non-automatic qualifier in fourth place. Priest judged that really well, as did Schmidt. We saw that from Ramsey Anglo in the first heat, the Dutch athlete executing his last 50 metres really well. Great to see the Polish flags out in force. No, the Swiss flags. I saw the red and white, but they haven't got any shade. They're using the flags for shade instead. But it was at this point, you see the Dutch athlete way out of it. Swiss athlete coming through in lane three, looking like he was going to get the best of the rest. And just keep your eye on lane two and Seamus Derbyshire, because he comes from absolutely nowhere to take this final qualification spot and finishes with a bit of a flourish. I think he does a forward roll. I think it's Seamus Derbyshire. We saw it out of shot. But Priest making light work of that. Another athlete underneath 50 seconds in this opening qualification round. Look to repeat that. So was it Seamus Derbyshire or the Czech athlete that did a forward roll? I'm not quite sure, but super tight on the photo finish there. There we go. It was Seamus Derbyshire. Not to be <laughs> outdone by the gymnasts that are competing probably around about 100 or 200 metres away. The men's event there gets underway tomorrow. Seamus Derbyshire placing a bid to be on the British team so he can do 400 hurdles and a forward roll. Hopefully not too bruised. Confirmation, Constantine Priest, 49.63, followed home by Nick Schmidt, Seamus Derbyshire. There isn't a little cube next to his name at the moment, but Martin Tuszek will also go through to the semi-finals. There's confirmation of all the results with all the semi-final qualifiers led home by that uh, very good first heat. Victor Carolla, 49.35, and a personal best for Jacob Paul of Great Britain, Northern Ireland. Tuchet gets through as a fastest non-automatic qualifier. There you go. How can you tell the difference easily between the Polish and the Swiss flags? Come uh, on. There's a big plus in the middle of the, of the that's one, Swiss flag. That's one. You know the Swiss flag is the only square flag in Europe. Oh, Phil, you are a fountain of knowledge. Yeah, we'll have to play Trivial Pursuits at the end of the session. <laughs> I would love to go to a track and field quiz hosted by Phil Minchel and Alex Sessel. Jeff Whiteland treated us to something similar, I think, in lockdown. 
have off Fidek. 75 meters, 78 in the opening round. It did take him a few throws in Eugene to hit the automatic qualifying mark before going on to take that gold medal. And that looks like it could be past the automatic mark of 77 meters and 50 and by quite some margin. It's landed on top of the 80 meter mark. Pavel Fidek will be keen to send a message to Voltek Nowitzki, his longtime rival, to say, I saw your automatic qualifying throw. I haven't managed to match it in one round, but I'd love to lead this morning session here in Munich with the furthest throw. Pavel Fidek. My favorite Pavel Fidek story is when he handed over his gold medal at the Beijing World Championships to pay for his taxi home after the night out. Did get the medal back eventually, but shows sort of uh, celebrations that were going on in Fidek and his team. Okay, so we are now into the third round in Group B of the men's hammer. Just Pavel Fidek with an automatic qualifying mark. Kokan at the moment down in sixth place. Fourth place finisher from Tokyo last year. And that looks like it could be better for the Ukrainian. Just keep your eye on the 12 spots overall. 12th place still sitting with Cienfuego of Spain from Group A. 73 metres, 26. So that's the mark these athletes are trying to hit. Mikhailo Kotkan is over that already. And that throw is going to help us cause even more. There we go, 77.85. Kotkan joins the list of automatic qualifiers. Ah, I'd forgotten about Ben Tallis. He quietly got on with his work. That first round effort. I love that Kotkan lists Hallets as his hero. And here he is competing alongside him week in, week out. So our last Polish athlete, we've already got two in the final. Marcin Butinski. Has one last chance to push himself up into the top 12. He's looking for 73 metres, 26 to do that. And he won't manage it with that throw. It falls short of 70 metres. So it's best effort from the first round, 71 metres, 86. Just two Polish athletes into the final. I wonder if we'll see all of the men take their final throws. If they know they're already in the top 12 or comfortably in the top 12, they might not bother should have six more athletes. Five, now we've lost Pavel Fidek to throw in this final round. The likes of Christos Pantasakis, he's in eighth place overall when you combine the two groups. So he might skip. Yep, Pentel has already retired with his automatic qualifying mark. Pantasakis not throwing again. It's like Nick Miller of Great Britain not throwing again. Brings us on to Tumas Sepinin. He's 16th place overall with a 71 meters, 24. He needs to find two meters and three centimeters if he wants to take part in tomorrow evening's final. Can Seppin in find two more meters? Big roar from the Finnish athlete. And the wrong side of the 70 meter line. No final for Thomas Seppinen of Finland. Talk about the athletes being out there for a long time, the track and field judges. I wonder if it's one shift to cover both of these pools, because they've been out there an awful long time. 68 metres, 90 centimetres for Seppinen. No improvement and no final. Could have another two athletes. We have got the other Frenchman, Jean-Baptiste Bouchel. He is outside the top 12 at the moment. Big disappointment for Jan Chossenad in the first round. 70 meters 79 he's got to find almost three more meters and that's ow no underneath the 70 meter mark so it will just be Quinton Bigo a sole Frenchman into the final it's just the Nand and Bruxelles here just not quite hitting their best marks Bruxelles that 
double bronze medal performance from U European juniors and world juniors. So plenty of years still to develop. Michelle would have loved to double his experience here by making the final and getting to throw against these big men twice. He spoke when we started Group A of qualification, European dominance in the heavy throws has kind of wavered slightly, it's become very international, particularly look at the men's javelin throw with the likes of Nero Chopra and Anderson Peters on the women's side as well. Sandra Perkovic doing her best to hold on to that discus throw and accolades for Europe, but charges coming from North America, from China. North America, particularly in that shot put, that one, two, three in the men. But the men's hammer and the men's discus are very much still a European's game. Nick Miller, double Commonwealth Games champion, just packing his bag. Ivan Henriksen choosing not to take his final round effort. The Norwegian up in fifth place overall. And we should have finished with Pavon Fidek if he wanted to throw, but he didn't. So there's the list of qualifiers. As we'd expect, Fidek and Novitski operate up as occupying first and second. Fidek at the moment has the bragging rights as we head towards the final. No huge casualties for me. Perhaps just Chassinan of France someone that I thought might be able to push themselves up into the final. I couldn't register a mark. Same fate as Christian Paz, the 2012 Olympic champion. I thought that second heat might be a little bit stronger, but to be honest, good few performances in that first round. They have managed to push themselves into the top 12. So all to fight for as we look towards that men's hammer final we've got the men's discus qualification completing this morning session so great treat of heavy throws action so then so we saw four great heats with the men's with the men's 400 hurdles and we're going to head over to the women's 400 meter hurdles just the three heats for these women. So contentious, some of the top 12 getting a bye through to the next round. We'll have to do a debrief at the end of the championships, see if we can agree with it. Sletum of Norway goes in lane eight. Nina Heskel, 21-year-old from Belgium, goes in lane seven. Camille Serra of France, Mediterranean Games silver medalist. She's the only French woman in these 400 meter hurdle races. Rebecca Satori, Mediterranean Games winner, got the better of Serdi to her outside a few weeks ago. Made the semi final of the World Championships as well. Representing Italy. Lane four is Eileen Demes of Germany. She's a great junior. I think saying she's been really suffered with glandular fever. But she's got herself all the way back up to personal best this year with her 56 1 2. Taking lovely applause from the local crowd. Drita Islami from the Republic of North Macedonia goes in lane three. Lane two is Anina Farr of Switzerland. I spent time as a heptathlete here, just over the one discipline. Christina Hallinen of Finland goes in lane one. She's the national champion. Did head out to the World Championships, exited in the heats. So the fastest on season's bests and personal best is Rebecca Satori, Mediterranean gold, Mediterranean Games champion in lane five. Demes, I'm sure, will be buoyed by the home crowd. Three athletes in the field have gone underneath 56 seconds. That's Rebecca, Rebecca Satori in Italy in lane five, Camille Serdi in lane six, and Elizabeth Setum of Norway in lane eight. Setum getting the fastest start at the moment. Trains alongside Karsten Vorholm. It's a great coaching team to be a part of. You can see her out in lane eight. There's nobody else to judge her effort off. 
went to the World Championships over 200 metres, so testing her speed here back over the hurdles. And it's looking good for the Norwegian. She's got 150 metres to go, three more flights of hurdles. Good finish, good start there from Helen in Finland. She's closing hard. Just the single barrier left to go, and Christina Hallinen of Finland is having a tremendous run. Far of Switzerland, just easing past her in the latter stages. This has really not gone to the form book at all. It's like Camille Serdi of France blasting through for second place. And Nina Far of Switzerland with what could be the run of her life. She's got a personal best listed, 56-43. Let's see what the clock ticks, at, ticks past at. Camille Serdi had a very good finish. And Christina Hallinen of Finland went out super hard. I thought there was no way she could hang on to that. It is a personal best for Far, 56-1-6. Serdi came through, 56-1-8 for second place. Satori of Italy holding on well for her third place, 56-44. How did Christina Hallinen finish? have seen some terrific performances from some of the Swiss athletes uh, of the 400 flat and hurdles so far at these championships. You may remember Lionel Spitz yesterday in the 400 flat, a big PB to kick off. And uh, Petra Chani did well as well, but uh, far coming through terrifically. There was quite an exciting end to that race. Those on the outside seem to be flooding through. Helen of Finland just fading towards the end, but, but in a strong, determined showing be so tough on that tight inside line as we take another look back at uh, this race there is the starter poised and ready Hallinan of Finland in the blue right on the inside and far next to her and then Seri to their outside Harlan just beginning to tense up a little and she fades, but far, very, very strong. Lots of speed left in her legs at the end of that 400. Really impressive of far. So she has spent time as a heptathlon, heptathy. Competing in 4x400, so you can turn her hand to pretty much anything. Camille Serdi of France, strong in the last 50 metres to turn the tables on Rebecca Satori of Italy, reversing their positions for the Mediterranean Games. But Satori used a lot of experience and guts there in the closing 50 or 60 metres to separate herself from the rest of the field. And get that third automatic qualifying spot into tomorrow morning's semi-final. Where they'll get put back together with the 12 women that have had the opportunity to rest this morning. the men's discus qualification coming oh, around later. Yeah. Ivan Henriksen, Norwegian representative in the hammer throw, has navigated his way through qualification. <laughs> Germans, what an evening they had last night with Christian Pudens and Claudina Bitter taking <laughs> silver and bronze <laughs> <laughs> behind Sandra Perkovic. Oh, yeah, you can see, I find it interesting, you see them in the warm-up area, there's actually a weightlifting bar behind these men. A lot of athletes decide heavy lifting is a, a good way to warm up. It gets the muscles firing. They wouldn't do very many reps, but they're very heavy, kind of a few squats, a few bench presses. And uh, they're sharing a laugh. Perhaps they were talking about something they shouldn't have been talking about and then realised there was a camera on them. Well, there's Christian Say, without doubt the world number one this year. He's thrown over 70 metres on uh, five occasions, I've counted up. <laughs> and he's really making his mark, I mean, still only in his early 20s. And when you think that usually the discus throwers mature in their 30s, he's got a fantastic career ahead of him. Moving on to the second heat of the women's 400 meter hurdles here. So we saw uh, Sartori a moment ago. We have uh, Linda Olivieri in this, another strong Italian. Personal best in this heat's range from around 54, high to 57 seconds. And incredible to think that there's 
some four to five seconds to gain from that to uh, the recent world record by Sidney McLaughlin. But while we sometimes see big distances, it also means there's a potential for PB after PB. And that's one thing the athletes certainly enjoy. So on the outside, Nissen, Garcia, and Zupin here. Another Slovenian having just seen Kristen Shea a moment ago. Zupin, perhaps the highlight performance of her career so far, 2017 European and the 2400 hurdles. Silva, the Dechka of Slovakia, four national titles. She's won. Karolina Klafsik of Germany, actually won four titles as well, but consecutively. Latest in Berlin this year, inside another Olympiastadion. This is Jasmin Giga, the tall athlete from Switzerland, 2019 European under-23 bronze medalist. Pressler of Austria alongside her in lane two. And then Oliveri given the inside line there. So she was at one place ahead of Giga at those 2019 under-23s which were held in uh, Jevla in Sweden. On your mark. So once again, it's three plus three for qualification. Just looking along the times, Nissen and Garcia and Pressler, the three that have improved this year, but others Still quite a bit faster on paper. 55-6 for Olivieri. 55-7 for Krafzik. So not the easiest <coughs> race to predict. Olivieri, Press, Legiga, Krafzik, Ledeska, Zupin, Garcia and Nissen are now away. Krafzik really strong in the opening stages, now motoring down the back straights and already going past a couple of athletes and just seeming to pick them off while focusing on her lane four. So Giga with a bit of work to do. Olivieri, perhaps she'll start to come into her own down this home straight. But bigger lead than expected for Karolina Klafsik and the crowd now responding to that. Athletes nearly all in a line behind her. Olivieri now in a more clear second place. But the woman having this one all her own way is Karolina Krafsik. 54-33. Wow, so actually she's taken four tenths off her personal best there. So brilliant stuff because so far this year, 55-73 at best. Kafsik clearly quite keen to make the most of this occasion. And she'll have three rounds, whereas some other athletes, of course, coming straight into the semi-finals, but really relishing this opportunity. Similar overtones to Constantine Priest in the men's 100 metres hurdles. I mean, ran a very conservative first half of the race and then really found her pattern, really poured it on around the second bend and then down the home straight and came home quite considerable distance ahead of their, her nearest rivals. And if you think about it, yes, more than two seconds back, Yasmin Giga, who's by no stretch of the imagination a poor athlete. Giga, well, former European under-20 champion, very useful international athlete, hasn't quite hit the same form this year, but that was quite a performance from Krapsik. Not surprisingly, just needing to catch her best breath a little. Bouncing up and down, uh, clearly full of energy. And on the outside, it's Nissen and Garcia. And they were both showing very, very well into the bend, but there was no doubt at all who was a considerable margin ahead of them. It was just running away. Very nice hurdling as well, especially over the final four hurdles. Never stuttered well into a stride. Well, we saw a few men go through 
to the 100 meters hurdles 100 meters final last night and a couple of women as well having gone through all three rounds I think there's be a few women who are seeded looking at Carolina Krafsik and thinking that's a pretty good run Giga getting second place in 56 69 long way back and Ledeshka of Slovak Republic coming through for third. Those were the automatic qualifiers. Nelsia Oliveri, who showed well until the home straight, just drifting back a little bit. To see whether they've done enough to get through as non automatic qualifiers. First look at Maria Beck Romanchuk. She's uh, just still trying to figure out for me whether she's a triple jumper or a long jumper. Maybe she doesn't have to figure it out. Linda Van Klinken and all the time she spent out in the shot put and the discus throw on the women's side. Perhaps Marina beck Romanchuk might get the, the biggest tally for time on the competition field of play. Well, it's interesting because some athletes aspire to longevity in one event and others get to a certain point in their career and they say, I want to find out what else is possible for me in athletics. Well, having spoken to Marine about that, it's actually the second option. <laughs> the reason I ended up speaking to her about it is because we were stuck in a very long queue waiting to check in at Belgrade Airport on the way back from the World Indoor Championships. And she speaks quite good English. Uh, she was coming on back with Irena Heroshenko, who I'm sure we'll see in action later on in these championships in the women's high jump qualifying. Both are good friends. Both were on their way to Portugal. Started out as a training camp, but it then... Well, as we all know, the situation in Ukraine ended up being more of an emergency measure. So we end up with the third and final heat of the women's 400 metres hurdles. You can see the lineup. So from the outside, we have Hayley McLean of Great Britain, Northern Ireland. European under 20 winner back in 2013. As we scan past Narfel Farki of Greece, Barbosa, the Portuguese record holder, also in there. Just catching up. This is Zapoleta Arva. Very good Slovak athlete. European under 23 champion last year in Tallinn. Molnar of Hungary. Three times Hungarian champion. And of course, always a shout out for the Germans. Giselle Wender. First in the European Youth Olympic Games. I should say under 18 championships. In 2018, Alex and myself were commentating there in Yor in Hungary, and then on the inside, it's Nicoletta Jichova of Czech Republic. Well, a lot of these women in form, all of their personal best, with the exception of Barbosa, have been set in the last 18 months. Settle down from the inside. Jachova, Czech Republic. Vendor, Germany. Molna, Hungary. Zapatotova, Slovak Republic. Klimea of Estonia. Barbosa of Portugal. <coughs> Nafarka of Greece. And McLean <laughs> of Great Britain. Northern Ireland on the outside. Well, it's Jachova who started quickly. So too in lane three. Molnar of Hungary and Zapatelotova. McLean on the outside. That's quite so quick. Now around the bend. Well, it's the Slovak hurdler in lane four. Zapatelotova battling with Jachova on the inside, and now McLean having run a good bend coming into contention. But Jachova starting to pull away cleanly over the last barrier. 
So Petalatova going backwards and coming through also very strongly on the outside over the course of the last two hurdles, Nafaki of Greece. It's been a good morning for 400 hurdlers in the Czech Republic. They picked up the two non-automatic qualifying spots in the previous round. Hachova, defying the odds. People say you don't want to be in lane one, but Hachova looked totally at home there. 55-94, and a personal best for Nafaki. She finished superbly well. Perhaps trying to hold on to the coattails of Hayley McLean through the first few hurdles and then battling with the Britons as they came through the final few flights. One of the reasons the Czech hurdlers are doing so well is many of them, not all of them, are being mentored by Susanna Heshnova, the two-time world champion, and she recently retired. And I know she's passing on her expertise, and a lot of them are working with the same coaches that Heshnova had during her career. So it's uh, passing the baton, metaphorically, from generation to generation. Let's have another look at the final three hurdles. These athletes desperately fighting the fatigue, trying to stick to their stride pattern. These athletes so often only do seven hurdles in training, the full ten they save for the competition arena. Nicoletta Hichova of the Czech Republic looking the best over that final flight, really kicking it in in the last 50 metres. And Faki and McLean battling it out for third and fourth. They will advance to the semi-finals tomorrow morning. Hichova a well-earned win here. It does look like the non-automatic qualifiers might all come from the first heat. Certainly Hananin and Sletton look like they might be safe. Maybe Nina Hespel of Belgium as well. Five ninety-three. That leaves us with the fastest time going to Karolina Kravitz of Germany in the second heat. Her 54.32 is going to be the best, her personal best. Far picked up a personal best in the opening round as well. And Nafi there with her second place in the final round also awarded a personal best. And there's confirmation of the non-automatic qualifiers. Hesperin's letter and also getting a place in the semi-finals. Rest of the women. Zapilatova. Well, she looked good for about 250 meters for about seven barriers, and then the wheels came off. The Slovak runner. So over to the uh, high jump in the heptathlon. This is Anik Karlin, marginally better than anyone else in the hurdles. 13.21 to kick off. You can see that with a nice clearance, but fairly early stages here. And there's some much better high jumpers in this, so she will struggle to hold on to that marginal lead. This is uh, Carolyn Schaefer. So 168, you can see the height at the moment. Two groups going alongside one another. So Schaefer now running up and uh, arching over very nicely. The bar did get a bit of a wobble. So Schaefer, who won her hurdles heat a little earlier on, and one of those German athletes picked out in the press conference before the start of the event. 13.39, worth 1,066 points, but a fifth overall. So very close to uh, Carlin. Some 25 points off. And now in this second event of seven, of course, shot put and uh, 200 meters also today and then long jump javelin and, and finishing off with the 800 meters tomorrow so i suspect this may well be our focus for the next few minutes this is at leonie cambor so clearing there at the third time of asking at one meter 74. So that 
uh, extra handful of points there for Cambor, who was uh, struggling a little prior to that. That's worth 903 points. So still at these lower heights, really decent handful. And as a result, it's no wonder when you're kind of individual level quality in the high jump over 190 that you really start to impress and build a big lead and Nafi Tiam has been helped by that in the second event over the years but improving recently in the hurdles as well as we see Legarska also go clear at 174 and sometimes when an athlete before you does that it can really make you think right now it's my time just to take that moment to get those extra points on the board. Do we talk a lot about the combined events and the fatigue that sets in and the emotional and physical? Um, and there was some interesting point. Again, I, I had the pleasure of commentating Dan O'Brien at the World Championships, a multi-time world champion, Olympic champion. And uh, Harry Mara, the coach to Ashton Eaton, was talking about quite how different parts of the body are affected. He was making the comparison in the men's side that the hurdles is actually very hard on your on your torso, on your hip flexors, those sort of parts of your body. So to run a high hurdle is pretty hard and then come into a high jump, that's very challenging. Ouch. Alex, apology. That was, oh, and then was not expecting Anouk Vetter to be in trouble so early on in this competition. But when you're trying to drive your knee up like that and you've just done a high hurdles, perhaps Anouk Vetter illustrating that point perfectly. Yeah, Anouk Vetter, this isn't one of her stronger events. Only 181 at best, perhaps uh, her weakest of all, but uh, to go out so early on, really frustrating for her with a best of 171 worth 867 points. And I'm sure some of the better jumpers will get at least 200 points more. Ivona Dadic, decent hurdles performance from her. And she goes over at 168. So this is in the other group. better jumpers are heading up to a height of 177 next so you're watching live coverage then of these European Athletics Championships hope you're enjoying the coverage from Munich of course multi-sport concept here but to be honest if you're watching this stream you're predominantly probably interested in the athletics and that's what we're going to stick with so Adriana Sulek very consistent this year in getting PB after PB. And sometimes you just wonder when that's going to stop, how long that's going to continue for. Sulek is over first time at 177, though. 192 in uh, Gertzis earlier this year. So one of the better high jumpers in this. Sulek, she looked a bit tired, didn't she, in the hurdles, a little bit sluggish into the World Championships, she'd already done, I think, three heptathlons, backing up a, maybe three pentathlons indoors. Let's hope Adriana still can continue her good form into this European Championships. Sophie Doctor, you can see that she is somewhat grateful to still be in the competition, third time clearance at 171. And maybe she can try and summon, that, summon some of that strength again at 177 here. Not what the doctor ordered. So Scrivanova of the Czech Republic. Here at 177. Already guaranteed herself 903 points stay that way unless she gets over with one of the two attempts that she'll still have at 177. Every time the bar goes up 38, 39 points or so for these women. Yes, 941 for a clearance at this particular height. As you might suspect, Nafi Tiam not yet in the competition. She might enter at the next height of 180. Let's wait and see. Leone Cambor. Oh, living a charmed life and eventually 
coming off there for Cambot. So thus far, Adriana Sulek over at 177. Be in the group with the better jumpers, Group A. And Group B, the bar at 171 still. And looks like Holly Mills is the only, only athlete over that particular height. Ligaska once again. Well, this time, the bar seems to just stay up. Despite an almighty rattle. Had decent height, did Ligaska. Somewhat lucky there. Kept her feet well away from that bar, swinging round and over. So that will help the number two pole. Claudia Conte, or her and Maria Vicente, also quite young rising star heptathletes in this. Conte, decent high jumper but unable to clear first time at 177. Conte, 22 years of age, second at the European under-23s in Tallinn last year. One metre 88 last year in Arona. So over to Norvids then of Belgium. Equaled her personal best this year with 184. So kind of middle of the range in terms of these heptathletes in this particular discipline. 177 becoming a bit of a struggle. Just took it off there with her backside. Norvitz fourth in Tokyo last year. And Belgium, Holland, Holland, Belgium turned that frustration or that motivation into World Indoor Championship gold. What can Norvitz do here? Salming up next. Bianca Salming, the daughter of uh, Borja Salming, a huge, huge star in uh, Sweden, ice hockey player nicknamed the King. And one of the first Europeans to make an impact in the NHL out in North America, bringing the bar down here. Someone who uh, has competed internationally in the high jump itself and competes also on the uh, very successful Folksam Grand Prix circuit in Sweden. Sophie Wiesenberg was also one of the two Germans in the press conference. And a fairly consistent athlete across the seven disciplines, but one who's also just gaining a bit of experience. And that will be a moment for her to save her then. Over at 177, at the first time of asking. Haven't really said that so far. Ligaska and Sulek then are the other two who've done the same. But just looking along the list, six women have failed with their first go at this new height. Anuk Better is out, Nafi Tiam yet to enter. So considering that we effectively predict that Tiam and, and Better should be first and second, that's a very tentative prediction, obviously, but that's the way it was in Eugene. It's quite a contrast in this event. Schaefer in the other group. Gives the bar a rattle, but does go over. So what else is happening in Group B? Schaefer over, mentioned Holly Mills clearance. Schaefer, well, lots of height there, and then tapped the bar with her heel. Lucky there, didn't go off. Skrivanova. So this is her second attempt at 177. One of those six women who wasn't able to clear previously and now is over. Yeah. 
So the second event of seven and still just beginning really to get a flavor of how this competition might shape up. Campbell, excellent from her second attempt at 177. So we're seeing these athletes just work out exactly what they need to improve and get over. Can be tough in the midst of competition to do something that you've done in training so many times, but it's the mark of a good athlete just to figure out where they went wrong previously with a bit of advice from the coach as well. Goodness me, look at that. Claudia Conte. And this time it was with her heel, just the bar still wobbling, but she's over. Norvitz next up, world indoor pentathlon champion. Fourth at the Olympic Games last year. And now she goes over, so seemingly deja vu. That's five athletes to go over at the second attempt at 1 meter 77. Bianca Salming. Brilliant second time clearance for Salming there. And interesting, Alex, to hear about her dad being an ice hockey player. I think it's a Swedish multi-eventer in the high jump. No, short, no shortage of inspiration. Kaja Berskvist, Carolina Kluft, but also having a dad that's an international sports star. Great work for that whole support team. Salming delighted with that second time clearance. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because athletics can be quite an in inward community. As we look at uh, Carlin here, making it over quite crucially. Obviously, she was fastest in the hurdles and has a slight lead. She'll want to kind of build a bit of momentum, but not one of the better high jumpers in this. Yeah, I was going to say athletics a bit of a, an inward community and then uh, going to the Swedish Grand Prix circuit and see everyone really lauding Buddy Salming and seeing him getting lots of camera time and working out juice who else is here sometimes from other sports. There's potential for others other sports to come and watch the athletics nearby as part of the multi-sport competition at the European Championships here in Munich. Concept which uh, means I think that there's more cross promotion between sports. Certainly more an idea that tickets are available. And people thinking, well, what shall I go for? The athletics should be pretty good. It's an in-stadium event, generally with a good atmosphere. Sometimes better view than some of the indoor arenas. Action might be happening in a small corner. Adriana Sulek then, strong so far, here at 1 meter 80. Well, this bar seems to be refusing to go down. Adriana Sulek seemingly not going to let that happen either. Does put a lot of energy into her competitions. Interesting because obviously heptathletes do plan their seasons quite well. Sometimes if you haven't quite achieved the standard that you wanted, you might go for an extra heptathlon, but it does involve a lot of careful thinking. As we look here at Sophie Doctor. So made it over second attempt at 177, now at 180. Built up the speed on the run up and then didn't quite execute the jump. Seems to sail over but bring the bar down. Fairly flat jump.
So, still waiting to see when Nafi Tiam will enter the competition. As we look at Skrivanova. Right on cue, Alex. She looked like she wandered past the screen just as you were trying to check. We get a helpful little dash if an athlete has passed at height, but Nafi Tiam looking like she was getting herself ready to get involved in the other high jump group B. Skrivanova. First time attempt at one meter and 80, not quite. Still full of plenty of energy. Spring off the ball, the bed like that, but just catching the bar. As she came over it, so just need to find a bit of extra oomph. There we go. Yes, I did see on the computer that there seemed to be a pass right up to 180 for Nappy TM. So, it should be fairly straightforward. 195 this year, and even that, to be honest, might well blow the competition away. Adriana Sulek, we'll see how far she can go, but there is sometimes an element of jumping fatigue. Enter the competition quite early, and you might run out of steam towards some of the higher heights. More the case that we tend to hear about in the pole vault, though, which isn't part of the heptathlon, obviously. There we go. Such a tall jumper. And so much height between her and the bar. So 180, by the way, worth 978 points. Ivona Dadic then at 171, second attempt. Another nice clearance for an athlete trying to get back to her best sort of form. This is her first heptathlon of the year, and others who, who's had a few injury struggles over the last few years. Her foot was clean, just having another look over at Group B. Only lost a couple of athletes from this competition so far across both groups with Emma Ustervegel, if you weren't with us earlier, falling earlier in the hurdles. As we see Holly Mills, sorry, yeah, go at 174. So she'll have two more goes. So as well as that, Kate O'Connor, by the way, a DNS. She had a wonderful silver medal at the Commonwealth Games. And yeah, it was a shame to see Katie O'Connor start, but not start, but Conte. I love the passion she brought to her high jump competition at the World Championships. She had a great indoor campaign, finishing high up at the World Indoor Championships. You did wonder how could the young Spaniard fare over seven events. That's her first time failure at one metre and 80, but Conte just kept going and going and going at that high jump in Eugene, multiple attempts. That's a wonderful shot of her looking like she was two or three metres in the air, the way she leapt once she finally did manage to get herself a personal best. But two more attempts at one metre and 80. As we turn our attention towards that world indoor champion, Norvitz. So here is Bet Witz, uh, the Belgian, having just seen her teammate on, enter the competition at 180 and clear. Witz unable to do the same. So no bits. Took her two attempts to get over one meter and 77. I'm just going to look for the same one meter 80. You can see the 30 point point difference between herself and Nappy TM as well. Nappy TM successfully over that one meter and 80, entering the competition there. Here comes Salming of Sweden, and that's very nice. Like she's learned from the competition so far. Good at one meter and 74. Two attempts at one meter and 77. Big clearance there. Miles over one meter and 80. The Swede. Salming 
ever the perfectionist as so many athletes are still asking for technical input what did i need to lean away from the bar a little bit more give myself that space Gleisenberg at 180 now so here in group a on her run up and unfortunately the bar just coming down so as things stand Sulek Tiam and uh, Salming thus far over at uh, 180. All of those capable of going at least to 192. Anouk Veta will be uh, devastated to be out of the competition so early at 171 with this high jump. Still set to continue for some time. Oh, I don't believe that. <laughs> I need to. I need to see that There's again. Magnets Callan. on that bar. Callan, well, I don't think even she thought she cleared that. You told me to avoid conspiracies about <laughs> magnets on bars <laughs> yesterday, but uh, maybe it's the power of the sun pushing in a direction <laughs> I do melted. not know. <laughs> the, the high jump bar has been melted onto the uprights. Callan, yeah, she looked like she was landing as though it was a failure, then suddenly realised she hadn't felt or heard that bar fall down. What a morning the Swiss national record holders having fastest in the hurdles and then clearing by the very finest of margins in the high jump. Yeah, it's almost like the bar began rotating in a circular motion that kept himself kept itself from dropping off there. Skrivanova of the Czech Republic. A few years ago there was a good combined events, indoor international with the Czech Republic, France, Spain and Great Britain. Hasn't run in recent years but was a really good uh, comp for some of the younger athletes to get some experience. Skrivanova struggling a bit at 180. So one more attempt for her to follow. Leonie Cambor will be next to go for France. So she has at least 941 points to her name. Cambor, eyes focused and determined, but unable ultimately to go clear. So suddenly, the story of this high jump starting to change ever so slightly with those we expected to do well, just coming to the fore a little. But you want to see who can try and perform at their best and get those extra 38 to 40 sort of points. So Nagaska also now has two failures, joining Campbell and Skrivanova. with uh, two particular athletes in this. Obviously, Sulek joined by her teammates. Nagaska, we saw there. Got Vicente and Conte, the two Spanish women, two Belgians, Brits, Dutch. It's almost like there's a pattern where they're following each other. <laughs> Previously, it was a uh, second attempt clearance, and now it's two failures. Claudia Conte, I seem to remember, was the first Spanish woman ever to go over 6,000 points. Maria Vicente now taking over that national record. Norvitz, let's see what she can do. So, trying to buck this trend of getting two failures. Still this bar at 1 meter 80 in the high jump. And once again, just by inches, she managed to clear. So Vitz, one of those who's getting a bit of a momentum in this high jump. 184 this year, as I mentioned. Making her previous PB. A little way off. Uh, 
13.2 seasons best from uh, Gutsis in the hurdles earlier. Wiesenberg, the German then. World under 20 and uh, European under 23 champion. One of those who will really relish the opportunity to be in senior competition on home soil. And she makes it over at 180. So, brilliant stuff for the German. You can kind of build her way through this competition as they head next, of course, into the shot put. One of her better events. And equaling her season's best there. Sophie Wiesenberg with 180, 978 points. Well Madonna done. Dadic. Sorry, Alex, we're struggling to see stuff on the screen. So we're trying to help each other out when we have seen something. Madonna Dadic, that's her first time failure. One metre. No, it stayed on. Well done, Dadic. This bar, you are starting to believe it might be welded to the uprights. <laughs> the officials, in case you're worried, the officials do go back and check everything every time, but Dadic with a season's best. Schaefer, though, going clear at 174. Well, maybe it's the fact that some of these athletes are a little bit untidy in their high jump technique, just clipping that bar rather than taking it clean off. That's her second season's best for Schaefer. The so same with Ivona Davic. She is season's best in the hurdles, as did Schaefer with her 13.39. And now both the Austrian and the German managing a season's best in the high jump. So bringing their very best to the championship arena. Geravini of Italy is up next. She's on one failure at one metre and 74. Looked like she quite had the time in the air to wriggle her body over the bar. So Alex, what height did Anouk better manage? Because she's in the other bed. Going over to this bed. Yeah, I think it was 171, just having a look. Okay, and well. no one has actually exited the competition. No one else from uh, Group B, so yeah, really disappointing for Vetter. Not picking a good start to this competition for the Dutch women. Two men had a fairly decent competition, but Rick Tam pulling out halfway through Sven Roos, and there were some highlights, some good moments, but uh, ultimately not a medal contender yesterday. Saga Vaninen. European and World Junior Champion. So she'll have taken so much from those competitions and now a real opportunity for her. Particularly as she's risen past the seniors as the best Finnish heptathlete seemingly. Likes of Mia Silman and uh, Maria Huntington. They've also had a good few years, but Vanen and the one involved here. Heavy strap in now, Vanden's takeoff leg. I wonder if that will carry over into the long jump. Junior superstar trying to make a name for herself on the senior stage. So third attempt for Holly Mills at one metre and 74. That's a brilliant clearance and Great Britain, Northern Ireland, Holly Mills. You can see the relief. I mentioned the fourth place at the World Indoors by just seven points. Fourth place at the Commonwealth Games, Holly Mills. She's trained so hard all year after missing out on Tokyo, and she did not do all that training for a couple of fourth places. Yeah, Holly Mills, someone mentioned to be one of those really intelligent athletes, someone who wrote to her current coach, Laura Turner Elaine, former sprinter, and said, I want you to coach me, but I want to try and evolve into a heptathlete from a long jumper. And uh, so often you see athletes start to specialize or stay with the multi-events throughout their careers. So slightly different kind of career trajectory for Holly Mills and starting to focus on the Commonwealths and then see how it goes and do the Europeans rather than the Worlds. And again, potentially thought an intelligent decision 
but some of these athletes seem to have so many personal bests almost waiting in their locker. And once you've achieved a few of those, it's almost like you're waiting to try to get back to your best. And uh, But Mills said, just because you see PBs on TV, for me, I'm behind the scenes and I see how hard I work in every single training session. And some athletes see it as a, an opportunity to break through big in every single event. Others really invest in those weak events and train less in those that they are naturally strong in or have won national titles in and know that they usually perform well in Mills. A long jumper having won uh, titles at the European Youth, Commonwealth Youth as well. And the British senior medalist in that, but very much a, a heptathlete nowadays. Adriana Suwak has had an incredibly busy season. I mentioned it before. I want to say at least three pentathlons indoors. I think this could be her fifth full heptathlon outdoors. Looked, for me, I think I'm not quite up to date with what her season's best personal best in the sprint hurdles was, but she just didn't look sort of her emphatic self over that 100 metre hurdles. Good so far in the high jump. That's a brilliant first time effort at one meter and 83. And for me, Adriana Sudek with a silver medal at the World Indoor Championships, fourth at the World Championships. She's got to be thinking about a medal here today. It's early days, Emma Ushtabagel, Netherlands faltering. And Luke Vetter, you know, because underwhelming one meter and 74, but I was having a look back, was it 71? One meter 71. 71. And I was having a look back at Gotsits though. She only did 174 at Gotsits when she scored a national record of 6,693 points. Uh, Anique Vetter's hurdles pretty much identical. <sighs> see the doctor, the other Dutch athlete out there at the moment, first time failure at 183. So yeah, for me, Anouk Vetter, three centimetres below what she did in Gotset. So she, she's only really given away, what, 30, 30, 30 35, 40 points. It's not, it's not disastrous yet. Yeah, and as we saw yesterday with the decathlon, if you have some momentum and you can make up huge numbers of points in the javelin, as we know Anouk Vetter can do, then that could still make up all the difference. It might affect their her ability to challenge TM ultimately for the gold. Sulek Javelin is a weak event for her. Yes, you were talking about her season's best. 13.08 new PB in Warsaw earlier this year. By comparison, only 13.94 in the first event. So she real, really want to go over 1.90. Let's see, here is uh, Nafi Tiam though. Quite a bit of waiting around for her to see the athletes go through uh, second and third attempts. But uh, Tiam looking strong so far. 183, another first time clearance for her joining Sulek over. So this is Claudia Conte, now at 183, carrying quite a few failures thus far. So Conte lifting those knees up high, but bringing the bar down quite clearly this time. So Ligarska, Skrivanova and Kambur, and prior to that, Vetter, all out. The uh, first three of those athletes, Ligarska, Skrivanova and Kambur, all with three failures at 1 meter 80. So we really are going up a level, it seems, in class towards some of the better high jumpers. Norvitz made it over second attempt at 180. Now at this new height, three centimetres higher. Fitz doesn't get anywhere near the height, unfortunately. I seem to remember reading that some sort of injury between indoors and outdoors for Norvitz really hampered her training into the Outdoor World Championships after taking that brilliant gold indoors. But I still think Norvitz could do something special here. Yeah, very strong performer indoors where there isn't the javelin, which is one of her weakest events. Bianca Salming really has to maximize the high jump if he's, she's going to have a, a great competition. Another 192 jumper. Salming 
just missed out on a medal at the World Under-20s back in 2016. Wiesenberg now looks like she's in the mood for another clearance. So equaled her season's best of 180 a few moments ago. Bit of rhythmic clapping now around the stadium in Munich. Eyes intently focused on that bar. But no, another failure here for uh, Wiesenberg of Germany. I used to joke with my high jump friends, and it's probably about Tom Parsons, he used to train in the same place as me. He did not, not tempting to carry a ruler around. It's a three centimetre uplift in the bar there. And uh, so, I, mean, I know there's a lot, so many factors, and I'll never claim to be able to be a decent high jumper. But Sophie Weissenberg just looked a totally different athlete than she did at the, at the previous height. And I, I, I can't help but feel it's kind of mental. I've got to do something totally different. It's actually only three centimetres. Well, part of the problem often is adjusting your run-up. I mean, your coach, uh, if you're a top-class high jumper, let's just say in the men's events, you're jumping 225 or further, you actually need to start to be jumping further and further away. But particularly a female high jumper in a heptathlon, let, you're not jumping, let's say, your own head height. You don't really need to do anything that different. You don't need to make these technical adjustments that the high jumpers in the individual event would need to do. And the, as you say, it's probably just a little bit of panic, a little bit of stress, a little bit of lack of confidence here and there. There's a lot of very good high jumpers in the multi-events, so Nafi Tian being the perfect example. But the women further down, like the women at the moment jumping at the 170s, this is really club standard high jumping. And as I say, you don't really need to make that many technical events. You can get over it on sheer athleticism. So the issue is more often mental than, uh, than physical or technical. Yeah, Claudia Conte just had to check herself, unable to execute the jump. Don't know where she is, just nursing a little bit of injury there. She did touch the bed, didn't she? That's the rule. If she'd run through and not touched the bed, she could have tried again, but it was, it was such an abrupt stop. It was almost like it was a sprained ankle or something, or a, like she slipped on something. Yeah, you can see with her, her run up, slightly different from the other athletes. Brings her knees up high and chops her way through. Norwitz here. Second attempt, 183 for the Belgian. So, better timing this time. Once again, she's not leaving much height between her and the bar. Oh, dear. How on earth is this bar staying on? Today is a good day to be a high jumper. Norwitz just grazing it. Again, as so many of these other athletes have done, and she's done it herself lives to fight another height for the first time Norvitz is ranked as the top Belgium Bianca Salming you can see that uh, technically she's one of the better jumpers and proving that once more over at 183 and the Swedes will be delighted to see that Nilsson and uh, Samuelsson in the decathlon had some good events but ultimately not the consistency across all ten. That's a great little clearance there from Salming. So much speed coming up the bar. I think, uh, as Bill Mitchell quite rightly alluded to, it's um, yeah, these these athletes aren't jumping the heights of some of the other athletes. It's a, a shorter run up than you'd see in the high jump specialist. But I think you often get a lot more speed. I say for Weissenberg, not much speed there at all. Um, with the heptathlon high jumpers kind of coming flatter at the bar, like the likes of Eleanor Patterson, opposed to sort of loping style, maybe of Yaroslav Mahucic. And I think particularly there, Salming of Sweden, almost running straight out the bar and carrying so much speed across it. Yeah, Salming as well, not one of the taller high jumpers. Doctor of the Netherlands. So carrying two failures so far here at 183. We have Sulek, Tiam, Salming and Witz over the latter two at the second attempt. Just thinking through her mind, trying to imagine 
the clearance before she hopes it happens. Final go here. No, so it has been a tough start to the competition for particularly the two Dutch athletes we've seen already go out. Better still in the competition overall, but early exit. First exit to go, the first athlete to uh, go out in the high jump at 171. And just in case you were wondering, we do have in the field the women's triple jump qualifiers getting underway. We've just had the first few jumps in both groups A and B. And there has been a slight delay to the start of the men's discus group A. But for those two field event qualifiers, we'll bring you certainly all the highlights a little bit later on. We're focusing at the moment, though, on the high jump in the heptathlon. Claudia Conte is also out of the competition with a best of 180. So 183 worth uh, 1,016 points. So once again, taking the bar off reasonably early there. With her backside just needed a bit more of an arch trying to get over, but another who goes out along with uh, Dr. Wiesenberg next to go. And then I think we'll be moving up to 186. So last jump here at 183 for Sophie Wiesenberg. She will get the crowd's encouragement. So here comes the German with uh, some strapping on her knee. So similar to Dr. and Conte. Out of the competition with a best of 1 meter 80 worth 978 points just take a quick look at uh, group b and i can tell you the bar is at 177 jado dowder is the only athlete to go clear so far Well, this is Salmanen of Finland, the Finnish record holder, Seni Salmanen in the triple jump. We're going to be dipping in and out of the high jump in the heptathlon and the triple jump. First attempt for the very good Finn. Oh, and that looks a good effort indeed. Automatic qualifier, 1440. Only seven women in the Europe have gone past that mark this year. European list led by Marina beck Romanchuk. 14.59, but a tightly grouped bunch behind them. Just waiting for confirmation of that. Still a little bit to spare on the board, about 13 centimetres. So Salmanen, 13.90 to open her account. Can go a lot further than that, though. Finished record holder. Jumped 1463 last year, so potentially one of those women who can get over the automatic qualifier. Now Naomi Metzger, well, bronze medalist at the Commonwealth Games two weeks ago, improved there to 1437. And another good jump from the Britain. Well, the Britain, 10 times UK champion at this event. Six times indoor, four times indoor, six times out. And that's around the 14 meter mark, tidily on the board. Just a long wait. Taking a little bit of time sometimes to translate, transfer the measurement. 14.24, so excellent start from the Britain. Uh, probably will be good enough to see her through if she doesn't make any further improvement. Nafi Tiam at 186, simple as you like. So you expect her to build quite a considerable lead after two events, and she's on her way to doing that. Although it is a moving reference point at this moment, Witz in second overall, best of 183, 31 points behind after two events. So Marina Beck-Romanchuk, she's already qualified for the long jump final later this week. 
Now she's going after triple jump glory as well. That looks like an automatic qualifier for her. Well, 14.59 to her name. Follows in the footsteps of many, many good Ukrainian triple jumpers. Spot on the board. So Ukrainians happy. Oh, was that Beck Romancha? No, it was Eckhart. Sorry, I've got a two jumpers mixed up. It was Eckhart who got personal best of 14.53. Well, she got European indoor bronze. It's those yellow vests and a lot of sunlight. That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. Thoroughly valid excuse, Phil. It's <laughs> tough. We're <laughs> the other side of the stadium. We'd love to watch this with the naked eye, but it's too far away. And then the glare. But Beck Romanchuk, a fantastic athlete. I think that would have been very close on the board, though. She's technically really good. She's shaking her own head. Do you think that could come up as a foul for Beck Romanchuk? And I think that's one of her strengths and her technical ability to be so close on the board. But sometimes it's also her undoing. Yes. Bet Romancha aiming to become just the second woman ever to get long jump, silver, long jump and triple jump medals at the same championships. The only other woman, Inessa Kravitz, her compatriot back in 1994. The very first occasion that women's triple jump was contested, in fact. So Bet Romancha, good performance from her. Just to update you with. We have had the men's discus going on. <laughs> Christian, Christian Say, yeah. Trying to hunt down the automatic qualifying mark of 66 metres and a number of athletes. Eight Europeans over 66 metres so far this season, and they're all here. Daniel Stoll has the furthest mark in the world and in Europe, but Christian Che certainly has the bragging rights. <laughs> it's a lovely white peak cat there from Che's coach. Managed to do the magic one and done. Holchit Nowitzki managed that. Here is the World Championship silver medalist. He's been busy down there as well. Nicholas Alekna. Hard to believe, but he is still just 19 years old. Looks totally unfazed. The very highest levels of senior competition. So fast in a circle, just hopping across it, maintaining his balance as he releases the discus. Short of the automatic qualifying mark, looks like, looks like he's going to be bang on 65 metres, a little bit under 64 metres, 19 centimetres. And there you can see confirmation, Christian Che, 69 metres and 6 centimetres, championship record with his opening throw. He is out of here, breaking the championship record of Piotr Machowski. Poland, that was set back in Barcelona in 2010. Well, that's quite a feat to break a championship record in a morning qualifier. And Malachowski was one of the greats of this event in the last two decades, just recently retired. Uh, I'm just wondering whether he's watching this at home on Polish television. Just to do a bit of a housekeeping recap, Marina beck Romanchuk's distance with a following wind of 2.3 metres per second was 14.18, so we'll probably be good enough to see her through but we'll want to take a further jump or so just to make sure that she does see herself through to the final lovely shot there of Christian Che doesn't need any help looking any taller than he already is we were joking about how you can just start a rumor mill we're going to start saying he's seven foot and everyone's going to believe us I think he's slightly under he gets taller every time someone references but that is your only sight you're going to get of Christian Che he's going to head back to the hotel Get himself ready for the final tomorrow night. Sterenko in 11th place at the moment. I think that's because he hasn't thrown it. Yeah, that's his first throw. OK. Nesterenko opening up his campaign. He's throwing 11th in this group. Nine-time national champion. Actually holds the world age bests for a 15, 16, 17 and 18-year-old. I wonder if he held the best for a 19-year-old until... Nicholas Alekna got himself involved. 
done 64 68 this season his personal best is over that automatic mark of 66 meters but Nikita Nesterenko is waiting a moment for his measurement Simon Pettersson up next throwing 12th in this group a silver medal at the Olympic Championships just fifth at the World Championships and looks down at his hand there like why did the discus slip out a little bit early? The Olympic silver medalist just not managing to keep hold of the discus. And it hits the side netting. So a foul for Pettersson in the opening round. Adriana Sulek winding herself up. Trying to get psyched for this second go at 186. Oh, that's a brilliant attempt for the pole, and she goes clear now. So this, of course, is Group A, the better high jumpers, as we've been following. And Norvitz going out at this height after three failures. Nafi Tiam sailing over at the last three heights after entering. So this is Davila Kilty of Lithuania, married to the former European indoor champion Richard Kilty. Lives most of her time in the northeast of England. A pretty decent start from Kilty. That's close to the 14 metre mark. Just waiting. Well, it's confirmed as a good jump. We see on the replay. It's just slightly, slight, <laughs> slightly shy of the 14 metre mark. There we go. 13.83 for Kilty. It's quite breezy out there on the back straight. A few of the jumps have been with more than two metres per second. That one was only five, 0.5. Here's the 2016. European champion, Patricia Mamona. Mamona coming back into form in the last 18 months with an Olympic medal. That's a good jump from Mamona. I think that's the second automatic qualifier. We saw Eckhart of Germany jump 14.53 just a few minutes ago. Yes, just looking at that replay again. And she's got bags to spare on the board. She's very quick, good technician. Had a few years of injury problems after that European title six years ago. Has really come back. Nicely done from Mamona. 14.45 for the Portuguese jumper. So, heptathlon high jump continues. Bianca Salming, third attempt, 186 to stay in the high jump. Terrific clearance then. So someone who does have individual quality in this event, 192 at best. And taking over from her father as a terrific competitor, Burdia, who is lauded in Sweden and indeed in Canada, where he played for many years. But, uh, Bianca doing well. There, I think, is uh, Bodia Salming, part of the support crew. So, go up to 189 next. And here's Adriana Sulek at that height. So, here comes the young pole, and over at the first attempt. <laughs> Just thought she was beginning to stutter at that first uh, failure at 186 but now just regaining that kind of form that we've seen throughout the season. And uh, a great athlete to watch. She always celebrates well. So we'll see whether anyone else can join Nafi Tiam. Surely she can continue further. So looking for fourth consecutive first time clearance. And that's exactly what we get. 
Meanwhile, just quickly looking at Group B, I can see that the bar moving up to 180. We've got Jado Dowder, 177 first time clearance, impressively. Ivona Dadic and Zenia Krishan both going over at the third time of asking. Everyone else looks to be out. So here is uh, Dadic. Here's what happened a moment ago. Delight for her. And she also moves up to 180. So Carlin leading after the hurdles. Will be shuffled well down the pack. Best of 174. Vicente, Loban, Schaefer, Vaninen and Mills. All the same. All a best of one metre and 74 centimetres. So back with Bianca Salming at 1.89. So trying to get the most out of her best event of the seven. One of Sweden's top high jumpers in the last few years, along with uh, Sophie Skoog and Maya Nilsson. Now her third attempt at 189. I tried to summon the strength, but didn't come up with enough height. But still, equaling her season's best of 186, 1,054 points for Bianca Salming. Try to reach over using her athleticism. But that bar comes crashing down onto the mat. Despite what we've seen from some of the other attempts, it is actually quite precarious. That bar, the uprights do hover a little bit, kind of away. So the feet, yeah, there's a little platform that the um, bar rests on. It does come a little bit away from the uprights, but not very much. These narrow clearances we've seen are pretty unusual. So Adriana Sulek, almost like she's there. Uh, going through some warm-up drills before this next attempt. So, moving up to 1 metre 92. And this is Sulek trying to make up for the disappointment of that 13-9 sprint hurdles. Elekna, round two. We've seen Christian Che throw an automatic qualifier in the opening round. We're well into the second round of Group A qualification in the men's discus. discus. Nicolas Alekna, 63-91 in the opening round. Himself in seventh place in this group overall. Discus just wobbling through the sky there. 63 metres, 91 centimetre remains his best. 61-82 in the second round. So Bet Romanchuk on the runway for her second attempt. Just over 14 metres with the first effort. That looks a little better. 14-18 with her first attempt. That probably will see her through to the final on its own, but 14-40 is the automatic qualifier. Quite a stiff qualifier, just seven women over that this year. Once again, a lot to spare on the board. For somebody who is usually so precise as a long jumper, she's just getting used to the differences in run-up with the triple jump. And tends to still be a little bit eccentric in terms of her foot placement. So that is an improvement. 14.36 for Beck Romancha. Still not an automatic qualifier, but now I think she can feel very confident of going through to Friday's final. Back in the second round, Group A of the men's discus. Simon Pettersson on a foul, hit that netting on the right-hand side. That looks better from the Olympic silver medalist. Scuffs down just past 60 metres, 66, the automatic qualifying mark. 
Simon Pettersson through a great 70 meters 42. He wasn't at the championships, I think he did that in between Eugene and one of the World Continental Tours the other day. He popped off back home to Sweden and had a fantastic throw. Norka Pink on the 6th of August puts himself third on the season rankings in Europe behind Daniel Stahl, Christian Che. Pettersson at the moment, 62 metres, 39. Good enough for third place in this group. It's been fairly modest throws based on people's personal best and season's best in group one of the men's discus. It's hot, it's humid, it's warm, they've got sun in their eyes. And they have got a bit of an atmosphere and appreciative crowd down here. A lot of them hugging the shady spots of the seating. They're not necessarily as close to the action as they choose to be if they were wanting to give these athletes all the support they could instead prioritising staying cool, which is totally understandable. It's making hot here in Munich. Yes, well, those plastic seats are actually very, very uncomfortable if they're in the full glare of the sunlight here. We have a tiny amount of shade with the famous roof that stretches over this Olympic Stadium. Difficult conditions for everybody. So back to Adriana Sulek. She's trying to get those supporters pumped up. And commanding herself as well for this attempt at 192. So while this was the triple jump going on, already had one failure. Next go now. And unfortunately, bringing the bar down once again. So 192, this height she did clear in Gertzis earlier this year. And then went on to improve her overall score to 6,672 points. National record in Eugene. <laughs> European under 23 champion world indoor pentathlon silver medalist. So Nafi Tiam and Sulek already have 1,093 points from this second event in the heptathlon. <laughs> the Belgian appearing untouchable at times over the last few years, some great battles with the likes of uh, Norwitz indoors and Katarina Johnson-Thompson as well. And if anything, it was surprising that she failed with the first go at 192. That takes her to 1,132 points. So the next type would be uh, 195. But are we going to have one or two athletes there? As we look at Talos on the triple jump run-up. Romanian. Rather modest effort in the first round of 13.55. That's better. Well, she looks a little bit happier with that. Quick on the run up, going through the three stages quite well. Our loss 14 meters exactly, so a good improvement there for the Romanian. Adriana Sulek has already done herself a world of good, and she will finish the high jump with the best of 189, which is still very healthy and should lift her up to third overall, having been 17th after those hurdles. Not quite sure what happened to her, but seemed to struggle initially. Maybe she was uh, anxious to get underway. Just looked out of sorts, 13.94. So this is Christina Merkela, 
two-time world championship and also Olympic finalist. Oh, good jump there from Merkele. And she's been overtaken as the finish number one by Seni Salmanen, but still very, very competitive at the highest levels. Nicely done. That's very close to that automatic qualifier. There you see good flight, good final phase, the jump phase for the Finn. And it's 14-11. Even though she's been overtaken as the national record, level, she's the one that seems to make the finals in the big competitions at the Olympics and World Championships. Now, Minenko, the Israeli. Well, she really set the standard originally for Israeli women's athletics. Made four consecutive Olympic finals. Now 32 years of age, Minenko. That looks good. That looks close to 14 metres. Long way to go, though, into what used to be the Plasticine, as we saw last night when we were looking at the men's long jump final. It's been replaced by an electronic Hawkeye mechanism. So Minenko, 14.06 for the Israeli. She could be well on the way to another European Championships final. Right, well, I can tell you we have three high jumpers still going in the heptathlon. Adrian Sulek just going out a moment ago, actually, so down to two, I should say. But uh, Jado Dowda in the other group with the bar at uh, one meter 80. Let's focus on Nafi Tiam for the moment as we move up in this group of better jumpers to 195. So entering at 180, clearing all the way up. First time failure, 192. And now one meter 95 for Nafi Tiam. So. She's equaled what she did earlier this year. She said, you know, we shouldn't read too much into Anouk Vetter. Only inverted commas from the rubbish high jumper getting 1 meter 71. When you've got to sit there and watch Nappy TM just push that bar higher and higher and equal season's best, which is already the world champion. Tiam, as always, piling the pressure on her rivals. The pressure so far in this men's deathless qualification has come from Christian Che, championship record with his opening throw. Alekna struggling a tiny bit, 63.91 isn't an automatic qualifying mark. And he's a, a lot closer there. That yellow line on the infield indicating 66 metres. Nicolas Alekna isn't going to automatically qualify, but you would say second place in this pool. These two groups, for me, being seeded much more evenly than the hammer throw men's groups we've seen. Fourth in this group have hit that automatic qualifying mark this season, and then we'll have another four next season. But that was Nicholas Alekna's final attempt here in Group A of the men's discus. He was slightly late getting started. Withdrawal from Martin Thurbeck of Germany. Nikita Stenrenko should have been next into the into the circle. We'll try and tidy up what's happened to him if we get a results graphic. But Simon Pettersson struggling a little bit down here. 62-39 puts him in third group, third place in the group overall, and that might be a small improvement. And it's a foul for Simon Pettersson. Sense that wasn't a decent throw. In the third place in the group at the moment. Christian Che topping it, 69.06. We call us a Lechner in second place at the moment. Simon Pettersson, the penultimate thrower from this field. Philip Mihalinov of Belgium, the only athlete who has a throw left to give. He's in eighth place at the moment. 
Simon Pettersen, a man with a season's best of 70 metres, 42. Struggling down in the low 60 metres, and that expression from the Swedish coach kind of says it all. Confusion, frustration, and a nervous wait. Simon Pettersen, probably not a nervous wait, I'd say, for Alekna. But here is our final thrower from Group A of the men's discus. Group B due to get underway in around about 25 minutes. This is Philip Milanov. He's in eighth place at the moment with 60 metres and 43. That could be further over that 60 metre line. It's on 64-48 this season. Opposite side of the circle from foot of the track from Norvitz and Nafi TM. They're fighting out in the heptathlon high jump. Philip Milanov trying to improve his eighth place ranking coming into this round. 61 metres and four centimetres, so no improvement. It does improve him up to sixth place and every centimetre will count when we combine those two groups. So over to Nafi Tiam then. Can she go any higher? 198 now. This would be her best jump of the year so far. Tiam once again is over and the bar does stay up. So terrific stuff for her, of course, has gone over two meters in the past. It has also struggled with injury and hasn't been quite at her best in uh, all events. However, that's not just a huge amount of points. That's a championship best in the heptathlon high jump. That improves on her own 197. Has, of course, got the world best from when she competed in Talans a few years ago at 202. So that'll appear as a record next time around in Rome, unless she goes higher here. Jade O'Dowder is having a brilliant summer bronze medal in the Commonwealth Games. Third and final attempt at one metre and 80 centimetres, and she gets it. The British athlete can barely believe that bar stayed on the uprights. Fantastic points for Jade O'Dowder. Her coach, John Lane, is doing a great job with her. And it's a personal best. Well done for Jade. Yeah, Jade O'Dowder, the uh, sister of the Irish international footballer, Callum and uh, she's getting some sporting stardom in her own right as you said Commonwealth medalist strong in the javelin and uh, better in the shot but then quite a number of British heptathletes over the years so a little bit different to some of those who've been really strong in the hurdles and the long jump like Katarina Johnson Thompson and uh, Jess Ennis Hill which is really interesting to see So O'Dowder and Tiam, although they're in different groups, so the last two athletes remaining in the competition. O'Dowder, 1,996 points. That's her total across two events so far. So she'll certainly move up. Here is Nafi Tiam at two metres and one centimetre. What can she do? Bringing the bar down, but looking to be in pretty good shape so far. So, in the decathlon, we also saw a championship best performance in the second event. That, of course, was the long jump with Simon Ehama, and this time Nafi Tiam in the high jump. Just taking a look at her foot, looks okay. Well, now this is Otavia Sestanaro, former European under-20 champion. Proved her best to 14.22 this year. Just two women over the automatic qualifier of 14.40. She's not going to join them, but that's an excellent jump from the Italian. Well, Sestanaro was struggling a little bit during the first couple of rounds. 13.39 and then a foul. That's much better. It's around the 14-metre mark. And there hasn't been too many people just unleashing really big jumps. 
Eckert, Noemi Eckert and Patricia Pomona have gone over the 1440 automatic qualifying distance. Then there's Bet Romanchuk at 1436. And after that, it's a large group around the 14 metre mark. There you see Sestanaro, 1386. She's jumping into a very slight breeze as well. So I don't know whether Nappy Tiam is uh, nursing something in that right foot of hers. No, I think she was actually just making sure that her, the sticking pastor, which would have been a mark of start of a run-up, was just not going to be uh, displaced. Which is going to, in case she needs more jumps. So we've already seen her add one centimetre to her championship best performance from eight years ago in Zurich. Can she go even higher? Nafi Tiam running at this bar, attacking it, but ultimately bringing it down. So one more attempt to go, and I just wonder I whether she'll keep going. I mean, looked at O'Dowda getting that personal best previously, and uh, looks as though Anara has come up next to her name, deciding that she's got a good handful of points from this event. The same could be said. For TM. It has actually come up on screen with an R as well after two failures at 2.01. So it looks like that is the conclusion of the heptathlon high jump. Yes, I'm just looking across to the far end of the stadium over by the steeplechase pit and they are bringing the uprights down and starting to tidy up the high jump area. Yes, it's all over as far as the high jump's concerned. But we move on later on today to the shot put and then conclude the first day in the heptathlon with the 200 metres. It must be a bit of relief for these heptathletes to head towards something like the shot put. It's not quite as physically harsh as the high jump, all those sprint hurdles and, and finer margins. You're almost trying to hit your perfect rhythm and your perfect technique, whereas in hurdles and high jump, you're trying not to do something wrong bit less stressful maybe than the high jump in the hurdles. Well, the shot put is scheduled to get underway at 19.49. Why they've picked 19.49 instead of 19.50, 10 to 8, I don't know. There's the heptathlon standings after two events this morning. Yeah, Nappy Tiam, as you can see there, with a lead of 188 points from her teammates. Teammate Norvitz, Adriana Sulek, very close to that. 205 points behind. Jado Dowda has moved up from eighth place into fourth. Sophie Wiesenberg from fifth overall. And now equal fourth with O'Dowda, in fact, on the same number of points. And there we go, we can see it more clearly and a projected picture as well. No surprise that Tiam expected to end up top. Adriana Sulek in third. And Anik Werther, well, can she recover after that poor high jump? Obviously, she has a fantastic javelin to come on day two, and that may well help her stay right in medal contention going into the uh, 800 metres, in which she's pretty decent as well. 59-81 throw at Gotsis earlier this year. Of course, uh, Tiam capable of similar herself. So the heptathlon continues with the shot put, as we mentioned, starting this evening session here on day three inside the Olympiastadion. Good to see the fans staying hydrated as well, excruciatingly hot. Plenty of choice of drinks, including some half-decent beer, as we mentioned. Maybe too early, maybe not. <laughs> They say it's always five o'clock somewhere, don't they? <laughs> it's uh, coming up for about 20 past one here. I'm looking forward to a beer this evening, but yes, it's a bit too early for me. We've got a lot. Well, we don't have a long session tonight. It's quite a compact session this evening.
So there's the triple jump results from the first round. We saw the highlights and we saw Nella Eckhart Noack now competing quite often under a married name. Get the automatic qualifier at 14.53. Runs it all the way down. Indeed, 13.71 was sufficient to see you through to the final on Friday. 13.71 former European under-20 champion Spiridula Karidi. There's some of the women who didn't make it through. Some women struggling, didn't make marks. One or two women who would have expected to challenge, maybe the likes of Maya Ashgag of Sweden or Joyce Maduka of Germany, didn't quite make it. just going to take a brief break from commentary now we still have the second group of the men's discus qualifying to come that's scheduled to start at the bottom of the hour at 13:30. so rejoin us a minute or two beforehand
just about to get underway with Group B of the men's discus qualification. We had Group A earlier on. This was due to start around about five minutes ago. Had a slight delay. This Group A was slightly delayed. Wanted to give these men their full warm-up time out here and feel the play so they can get a feel for the circle. Lucas Weisheidinger of Austria is going to get us started. He picked up a bronze medal here back in 2018 at the European Championships and at the World Championships in Doha. And at the Olympic Championships, Olympic Games. So Lucas Weisheidinger really knows his way around a major champ championship final. He only finished 10th at the recent World Championships though. 66 meters is the automatic qualifying mark. Christian Che went out to 69 meters in the championship record. His opening throw, so 62 meters, 27 centimeters for Lucas Price hiding up. Next up is Oscar, Oscar Sachinik of Poland. Eyes and quick in the circle. 62, 63 metres for the European Junior Champion back in 2017. Hops across the circle. And it's so impressive when these men can catch air when they're throwing. Stachnik of Poland puts himself into the lead. A quarter of a metre ahead of Weisheidinger. Next up. Daniel Stahl, the reigning Olympic champion. He's the world leader as well with 71 metres, 47. Before the World Championships, he said, and the pressure's on the younger guys. I'm just going to go out there and do my best, throw the furthest. But he was only fourth place. I think he would have been frustrated by that. And that's a great opening throw from Daniel Stahl. I'm sure he'll be aware. Christian Che broke the championship record in his opening effort. Daniel Stahl come here and thrown one throw and ended his day. He didn't enjoy the hot conditions in qualifying at the World Championships. And Daniel Starr, we saw him uh, during the warm-up proceedings with a handheld fan. So perhaps finding it a bit hot here in Munich, but place to the crowd as always. 66 metres, 39, very efficient over the automatic qualifying mark of 66 metres. And that'll be the last we'll see, I think, of Daniel Stahl, unless he wants to practise some training elements with his coach. Janos Husak of Hungary up next. Really well balanced there as he released a hammer. Hammer? We had the hammer earlier. Discus now. Husak, 63-25 this season. That looked a little bit short of that in the opening round. Fifty-nine meters, eighteen centimeters. Saka like Stad of Norway up next. Sixty-four meter thrower this season. Just uh, claps his hands in frustration, and that's why it's short. At 50 meters, he's walked out the front of the circle. No mark for Sackstead of Norway. These men, one advantage is they know what happened in the first round. They know what it would take to get into the top 12 and tomorrow evening's final, but it's also, it is hotter. And the sunlight is beating down on the athletes. There is some shade out there, but less, less so than there would have been an hour ago or so, I think, for the Group A. Lawrence Okoye is up next record holder for Great Britain. Made the Olympic final at home in 2012 and then nipped off to play a bit of American football. And he's starting to find his feet back here in athletics. Good. Silver medal at the Commonwealth Games just last week in Birmingham. It does seem like every time he throws, he's looking slightly more back at home, if you like, Lawrence Okoye over 60 meter mark with his opening effort. 60 meters, 22 centimeters for Lawrence. Oh. Norwegian 
Belgian flags flying, but it is Finland next in the circle. Gunnarsson with a huge roar. He's a national record holder for Iceland. Hops across the circle. Showing off that huge wingspan. It's in excess of 60 metres. There goes Daniel Stoll. It is a little handheld fan for company as well, and an official walking him off. Bucket hat, the cooling method of uh, choice for the Icelandic Wigginson. Apostolos Paradis of Cyprus is up next. He's got a pair of Commonwealth Games medals, fourth at the 2019 World Championships by just 50. I reckon 50 centimetres. I think it was short. I think it was less than that. Paralis, the Cypriot taking fourth place at Doha World Championships. And that's a pretty modest opening effort. 65 metres this season, 60 metres, 34 centimetres for an opening effort. Henrik. Janison of Germany is up next. Martin Weibig withdrew from the other group. Henrik Janssen gamely waiting it out. Some crowd support. He's done a good personal best this year of 66.25. Got a valid throw in his first effort though. Good bounce there on the discus. Those are, shows the force that's come down on the ground there. 58 metres, 56 centimetres for Janssen. Ruben Rolvink of the Netherlands. It's a good shot putter, just 19 years old. Left hand thrower. I like to highlight those when we see them. In between 55 and 60 metres is an opening effort. Holland, a good showing in the women's shot put uh, first place for Jessica Schilder, third for Jovinda Van Klinken. Emma Ustabegel not doing so well, crashing out in the women's heptathlon in the first event. And Uke Better trying to keep dreams alive of another combined events medal for, for the Netherlands. Andreas Goodrich just asking for quiet here. Finds that rhythmic clapping distracting. That from the Hungarian earlier in the program. Right, that's over the automatic qualify mark. Andreas Gudges is the defending champion. He won the world championship title in 2017 by two centimeters. Back that up with a European gold in Berlin. And he was third in Oregon. And that could be all we're going to see of Andreas Gudges, his young teammate. Kodos Alekna had to do all three throws over in the previous group. No, he didn't. He, he walked off, didn't he? Thought he'd done enough. Decided to have a rest. But Goodges can know for sure that he's automatically qualified alongside David Stahl. Christian Che, all the big hitters at the moment, looking very good for a spot in the final. No surprises so far. Malik Barta, six-time national champion in the Czech Republic. Dipping underneath 55 metres with his opening effort. Barter looks a bit frustrated, just 53 metres, 77 centimetres. Alan Fiafirica of Romania will be the final thrower in this opening round in Group B. Really 
certainly has made a name for himself in major championship finals. Very reliable. Seventh at the World Championships. 65-57 this year. That's below that automatic qualifying mark. But his personal best is good enough to qualify automatically. Points down the field. That's a good opening effort from the Romanian. Could be around about 55, 65 metres. Look at the men in Group B. 64 metres, 17 for Fira Fiorica, up into third place. So at the moment, Filip Milanov is in the 12th spot. Obviously, he can't respond as he was in Group A. 61 metres and four would get you into the final, but I'm sure that's about to change. Daniel Stahl, thanking the crowd, getting applauded by the coach as well. Simon Pettersson struggled a little bit with the Swede in this competition in the first group. He's in seventh place at the moment. Vice Heidinger, so dynamic in the circle. That's a brilliant effort from the Austrian. As I say, so, so many of these other athletes, they poise and set themselves. As Vice Heidinger is very dynamic. He always swings away from the throw, then back into it and launches across the circle. They call it well, a static start. And these are the other technique. It won't quite be an automatic mark for Lucas Weiss Heidinger, I don't think, but a brilliant second round effort. But also sometimes you see the discus flies very cleanly through the air and is really caught. And at other times it flies a lot more awkwardly, but still just as effective. Weiss Heidinger, 65, 48, puts himself in fifth place overall. That might be all we see, the Austrian. Over to Oscar Stachinik, Poland. Giving us an extra twirl in the circle. Saving all that momentum. That's going to be just over 60 metres. I don't think that will improve as 62-52. Fifth place in this group. He is seventh overall at the moment. So the Polish athlete, OK. It's pretty evenly spread six qualifiers from each group as it stands at the moment but we're only just into the second round in group b there goes good just chaperoned off the track Janos Hudsak of hungary ninth place at the moment Let's get up over that 60 meter mark <laughs> love that expressive yell that does look like it's the right side of 60 meters so oh Curse of the official there just deciding it's the other side of the tape. Very close to 60 metres in the second round for Janos Husak. We always hear stressing spots in the final, willing these men towards that top 12 position, but you mustn't lose sight of the fact that to represent your country is an honour. It's not all about final. 59.99 is an improvement for the Hungarian. Managing to get yourself selected to your team, having a level of competition that selects you into U European Championship is impressive in itself. Of course, we're always looking towards finals and medals. Each man, each athlete here on this track is giving its very best shot. Sagstead does choose. Ah, no, it's been given a red flag. Maybe it landed outside the sector. Oh, it has landed in the cage. So Norwegian spent. Stead sitting on two fouls at the moment. The camera focusing on the Swedish coach there, perhaps the same coaching team. Just punches that discus. Norwegian super frustrated. So Lawrence Okoye then, 60-22 so far. Not going to be good enough. He needs at least a meter's improvement, and even then would put him in a slightly precarious position. had a, a bit of trouble at major championship in the past since returning to the sport. I remember hearing a story about there was a discus that was uh, fresh and he just struggled to grip that new discus. First onto the scene in preparation for that home Olympics, performed really well there making the final. 
talk about Hari, one of our other brilliant discus throwers in Great Britain, mentoring with Lawrence Okoye. It was a smart choice, to be fair, to go over and play NFL. Who'd, who'd uh, turn that down if they had the opportunity to see Devin Allen doing something similar to Sprint Herder? Goodnesson of Iceland, 61-10 in the opening round. That looks better. Three rounds goes by incredibly quickly. Halfway through round two already, blink and you miss it. Fail to make your technical adjustments and you miss the final. Goodnesson is the national record holder. 71-80 remains his best. Seventh place, just a reminder, 12th place at the moment. collect 12 athletes across the two events. Nick Percy holding on to 12th with 61 meters, 28 at the moment. That's the target for these men. Powerless of Cypress. Trying to improve on his 60-34. We didn't see any of Nick Percy in Group A. I think he'll be a bit disappointed with 61-32. Yeah, he's been actually bumped down now into 13th place, so that means he's definitely out of things. So that's 61.95 from Paralys. Puts him in 7th place in this group. And 10th overall, so it's really tight in these final few qualifying spots. Henrik Janssen, 10th place in this group at the moment, 58.56. Being improvement up towards the 65 meter line. So it's very much a, a moving goalpost that uh, 12th spot changing all the time. Now, uh, Goodney Goodnesson, 61.80 is needed. Now. I feel like that might might possibly go up over 62 meters. 62 meters, 60 for Janssen. Bumps himself all the way up to fifth in this group, and that's what's pushed the Cypriot. Paralyst down into 12th overall as we combine the two groups. Rolvink of the Netherlands is next. That left hand thrower, they've adjusted the cage. Just short of 60 meters, could improve his 56 33 ever so slightly. It's a red flag. Rolvink. Rolvink must have stepped out. No, it wasn't intentional. You can see there. Toe and heel, that heel going down outside of the circle. So 19-year-old Ruben Rolvink has one opportunity left to improve on his 56 metres 33. Now we should have had Andreas Gudjus next, but he's automatically qualified, so he's wandered off down the track. So Malik Barta of the Czech Republic will make his way into the circle. Fifty-three meters, seventy-seven. Carter, a sixty-three meter thrower this season, that would be enough to make the final at the moment. Or oh, just maybe a touch off balance. And opening up, falling back as he released the discus. He's going to improve his fifty-three, seventy-seven, building momentum as he moves through these three rounds. So seven out of 10 athletes who have thrown so far in round two have uh, gone better than round one. So competition growing in stature. Still good knee, Valo goodness and of Iceland, 61.80 in the 12th spot. That is the target. So it's an improvement for Barta up to 58 metres 37. But down a standing so far in Group B. Fiafield occurs fourth place in this group. He's fine overall so far in terms of the final. That will take place tomorrow night. Fia Fiafiodica, the Romanian, knows how to conduct himself in global finals. Just over 60 metres there. That won't challenge his 64-17, and it has been given a red flag. I'm sure stepping out the front. Let's have a look at that slow mo replay. That's it. Romanian choosing to walk out the front.
remains in fourth place in this group at the moment. Goodrich and Stahl automatically qualifying with their first round efforts. Fjordica, he's last place in this group, the last athlete to throw in this group. Up in sixth place overall in the combined standing, so he'll probably just watch another couple of throwers, make sure no one does something unexpected. I mean, the likes of Lawrence Okoye, Goodnison could bump him down a little bit. So this is Stanic. I don't think we should have Weisheidinger next of Austria. So perhaps Lucas Weisheidinger looking at the overall standing, seeing his fifth place and thinking that's good enough. It's Mr. Oscar Stagnik of Poland. Trying to improve on his 62-52. That won't have done it. He walks out the front of the cage. He's in seventh place overall. Or is that just Group B we've got on the screen there? Just Group B. So the pole at the moment, ninth overall. Living a tiny bit dangerously. There's nothing more he can do about it. He's got to wait and see if the other athletes can nudge him down the overall leaderboard when he combine Group A and Group B. And turn our attention instead towards Yanis Masak of Hungary. Fifty-nine eighteen and fifty-nine ninety-nine. So he's on the charge, the Hungarian. Sounds a bit frustrated with that, and it just dipped down just past the 50 meter mark. The red flags come up indicated on the system. Sack. So don't bother. So 61.80 still the mark. Goodness, and of Iceland. He's coming up in a couple of throws time. We'll have Lawrence Okoye before that. He's up in eighth overall. His teammate Nick Percy just glide down that overall leader, leaderboard as this Group B's proceed carried on. So, so Gestad of Norway, two fouls, one last effort to see if he can out that, hunt out that 61 metres and 80. That won't do it underneath 60 metres, but it, nope, he's fouled it. It's like Gestad saying, what's the point? It's not going to get me in the final. I don't want it next to my name. will take no further part in the European Championships, but we very much should hope he's enjoyed his day. So Lawrence Okoye, one of this congested pack that is uh, just less than a metre above 12th place overall. But unfortunately, no further improvement for him, so he'll try and hang on and just looking to see how many more athletes we have left. I make it... Five or six left to throw. And just good, just won't throw again. So we're hitting halfway point in this final round. And this man, goodness, is in ninth place at the moment. He says he thinks his golf, the timing he's learned playing golf, helps his timing here in the discus. He's done pretty well so far 61 meters, 80 centimeters. So he is the man, apologies, he's ninth in this group, 12th overall when you combine the two, two pools. So Gunnarsson would love to improve his 61.80, put someone else in that danger zone on the bubble. And that might just, oh, I'm not sure, I think that's going to be slightly below. 61 metres, 12 centimetres, good series from Gunnarsson. And he remains in that perilous 12th position. One of the more eccentric athletes on the circuit. I remember him posting a photo on his Instagram upside down, doing a handstand with his face hidden, saying, put me in the team, coach, I'm ready. <laughs> Very good. Goodness, 
and a national record holder for Iceland, holding the 12th place at the moment. Postulus Paralis taking his third round effort here. I don't think he needs to. He's in 11th. No, he does. He's in 11th overall when you combine the two groups. That won't improve his 61.95. He's letting it be measured. So Paralis, slightly perilous. 11th overall. So the athletes left to throw. Henrik Janssen, he's up. He's up overall. He's okay in the overall standings. Andrew Goodges has retired from this group. He's okay. Malik Barter. He's outside that top 12 overall. He can throw his potential. He can get involved. There's Henrik Janssen. He's all right, he's seventh overall. Janssen just choosing to use all his opportunities here. Perhaps getting familiar with the stadium and the atmosphere, the dynamics. That was a foul in the closing round. Best of 62 meters and 60 centimeters. Ruben Rolvink of the Netherlands, two, one foul and a 56 meters 33. He throws to his potential. He could nudge someone out of this final. And that's not going to do it. A reminder again, we're looking for 61 metres and 80 centimetres, the mark from Iceland's Goodnesson. The 19-year-old Holvink will complete his European Championships here. Congratulations to him. We hope we see him very soon. It'd be brilliant if he can follow in the footsteps of Jorindy van Klinken and do the shot put and the discus. He's capable of both finishing with a throw of 60 metres and 12 centimetres. Barta up next, just 58 metres, 37 centimetres. Could he make a last gasp attempt for the final? Nope. That is short of the 60 meter mark. Three valid throws though for Barta. I think everyone got a little bit further. Jack Athlete does look a bit frustrated. And that would leave us with one final thrower, Herophilica of Romania, but as he's already sixth overall in the standings, I wouldn't be surprised if Alan Herophilica doesn't choose to take his throw. He does. There's Fiat Hurlica. I say sometimes you, if you had a, a block of training and you're trying to figure out your timing and quite what's going on, you, you're out there anyway, you're warmed up. Why not try something? See if you can finish on a high Fiat Hurlica. Fouled in the second round. 64 17. And that's uh, going to be round about 60 metres for Fiat Hurlica. But you can see, I can see that argument if they've been almost starved the competition. We had the Commonwealth Games that put a bit of a stall on the European circuit, so Fira Fulica might not have been able to compete as much as he might have liked to in the last few weeks. So taking all three throws here. It will be a final for the Romanian. We'll try and get those quali qualifiers all tied up for you. A really good string of valid throws for a lot of the athletes down there, building their experience. Yeah, someone with an outside chance of a medal, potentially some of the other athletes might have an off day. We know it's pretty stacked at the sharp end with those capable of uh, going over 70 metres or close to it, led by uh, Christian Shea, that new championship record in qualifying, 69.06. Seem to remember he's done that before at European age group competitions and then repeated that feat in the final as well. Right there, Rip. Oscar Stachink and Lawrence Okoye. They were, that's the cheer from the pole. They've both made the final. Delighted. There's the result of that group on its own. Just a one throw from Goodrich and Stahl. Automatically qualifying. Chris Heidinger just behind Fira Furdica. Not improving with that final round effort. Takes fourth in this group. And those little cues down the side indicate we did pick up a lot of non-automatic qualifiers in Group B. 
Magnussen of Iceland, the last of those. You can see the combined fields there. Christian Che with a championship record, top of the pile at the moment. And just good, just Daniel Stahl, third. Young Nicholas Elekner, fourth. What a battle it's going to be with those men. Simon Pettersson, if he can hit his very best, he's going to get up in the mix. It's going to be a super competitive men's discus, though, final. That's coming up tomorrow afternoon. So that concludes the first session on day three. We will be back, first of all, resuming with the heptathlon at 7.49 local time, so Central European time. So everyone else can do the maths from there. Here we are, the sites of Munich and as well the athletics specific medal table with Germany leading four gold medals so far, eight across the podium in total. So this just relating to this sport as well as this. Have a look at the overall standings across all sports. But look at that, a wealth of nations on there already after just two days of action involving medals. And there we go, Germany. Deja vu in terms of being right on top. 31 so far. France actually with more medals overall, but uh, for fewer golds. Particularly poignant for Ukraine with the... Uh, ongoing war there and I think it really brings it home when you consider that Ukrainians winning medals is normally run of the mill but particularly special given what their athletes are going through trying to find bases in other countries some staying there but yeah particularly important just to follow and see what happens of course uh, a big event for them is the women's high jump along with the men's hammer as far as athletics is concerned so as I say, do join us at 7.49, but this session coming to a close. So from myself, Alex Seftel, Hannah England and Phil Minchel, as we just take a quick look at the schedule for what's coming up, as has already been mentioned. Heptathlon resumes. Nafi TM looking fantastic. Championship best performance of 198. Obviously, the 200 metres, the last event of the HEP. And... Uh, we go all the way through to the men's sprint hurdles final to end the session. So thanks for watching and please do join us again this evening. <laughs>